Hey guys, my name is Shai, and this is a different kind of reading today. I am specifically looking at your moon signs. Okay, so down in the description box, you're going to find timestamps to every single moon sign, like all 12 of them. And um, I'm doing this because I have been receiving a lot of guidance about how it is time that our lunar selves, like the part of ourself that is represented by our moon sign, it is time for that to really come forward, to really step up. And this is a really huge energetic shift that is happening inside of you. And here we have a black kitty cat <laughs> to emphasize the importance of your lunar energy of your moon self. I'll just let her hang out while I talk, I guess. <laughs> um, Most of us, most of the time, really identify with our sun sign, right? With our solar self. And that solar energy has been really defining us and it has been really dominant and it has been really even overwhelming. It has even overwhelmed our lunar selves, our inner selves to a really great degree. And it's just whenever you're seeing this, it's part of this wave of allowing your inner self, your lunar self, your moon sign energy to come forward. And that is actually only the first step of this. The first step is to allow your lunar self to come forth, to really identify with it, to get into a place where you realize, okay, I am, yes, I am this sun energy. I am my sun sign. I am this solar self. And But then also equally, equally, that you are two halves in one body, right? That there are two aspects of yourself. And of course, this is only scratching the surface. There are more than two aspects of yourself, but these two primary pillars, your solar and your lunar energy, need to be equally in balance. That is the first step here. And for most of us, that's going to involve getting acquainted with our moon sign, getting acquainted with our lunar self. Um, and this is the self that, you know, that you keep inside. This is the self that rules your emotions and it's the self that you might be you might be able to express in the home when you're at home, you know, the moon really ruling your home, your inner world, your inner emotions. It's entirely about your inner landscape, but most of us most of the time don't really express our lunar energy when we go out into the world, when we interact with strangers or with just the world at large, right? We keep that lunar self hidden and for a lot of us, the lunar self is even hidden from us. It's hidden from our own selves because we've repressed it, we've pushed it down, and we've identified so strongly with the solar energy. And first, there's this process of bringing the lunar self forward, getting like getting to identify with it and realizing that it is an equal half of you. And then, this is the cool part, <laughs> eventually there's a phase of melding the two, of doing this deep, deep, deep inner alchemy where you actually kind of become your own hybrid. You become a third thing. There's this third aspect. Because the lunar, the lunar and the solar need a vessel in which to combine. They need like a place to go to mix, right? Just like if you're mixing a drink, you need a cup to mix the drink in. So that's that third neutral space. What is the third neutral space? Well, that is you. That is your human body. You are the third neutral space. So your solar and lunar selves are melding and combining inside of you and until you become a brand new thing. So this is something for everybody to discover because for a minute I was like, oh, I'm going to do a reading for every single combination. And then I realized if you combine every sun sign with every possible moon sign that that's just like way way too much um no it would take somebody years to kind of parse through all of that but that's why everybody is doing this personally so you're going to look at your own sun sign and then your own moon sign and figure out what's the product of that like say you're um i don't know a libra sun with a cancer moon and then you combine the two what happens when you put those two together what happens when you put those two together what do you get what's the new product that is what your life is going to be showing you. And I have this stone here. It's just like a, it's literally just a rock. I don't think it's any kind of special stone, but I picked it up because when I was originally receiving the guidance to do this reading, I was walking around outside after dark and something glinted in the dirt. Something caught my eye. There was light glancing off of this. So I went and picked it up and I was like, huh, it's this like little blue painted rock. Like a, somebody must have just got this from a craft store and it's a little, it's broken. So I picked it up because I knew that that was a sign. Right? It's perfect that it's blue and that the light was reflecting off it just like the moon, right? And then I walked a little bit further and saw that there were a whole bunch of these, but smaller pieces, smaller shards, other little pieces of broken blue rocks all scattered in the dirt. I left those there for other people to find. And for some of us, this is going to involve 
literally picking up the pieces, finding all of the pieces of your broken lunar energy. Your inner self has been fragmented, right? Has been broken, has been shattered, and it's time to pick up the pieces and put them all back together. And yes, Black Kitty Cat, you are so interested in this. This can be your toy now. It's for you. Um, and then the final thing is there's going to be a special message for people who have their sun and moon in the same sign because you guys are a different story. You guys are a different thing altogether. You're more than welcome to also watch your, your moon sign, right? But there's gonna be a 13th reading just for you guys because something special is going on with you. Um, and I wanted to look at that specifically. So go ahead and find your timestamp and I'll see you in your reading. Hello, everybody who has an Aries moon. I'm getting a very <laughs> interesting vibe off of you guys. I feel that a large percentage of you probably have your sun sign in a water sign. And that is this like conflict happening between your watery solar self and your inner fire that you maybe don't trust, you don't let out, you feel uncertain about letting it out because maybe there is like this deep sense of barely contained anger or anger that bursts forth out of nowhere or if or really if it's not anger for you it's like impulsivity becoming really impulsive like almost like you don't trust yourself uh in certain situations because you could do something incredibly impulsive because you want it now and it's like you don't trust you don't trust your aries moon especially if your sun sign is a water sign Two of Cups. <laughs> it's so important to let your, your two halves communicate <laughs> judgment. <laughs> King of Swords. Three of Wands. Okay, I'm finding that the fact that I can't put any cards right in the middle here because of this light, this is very telling. It's like you've erected this barrier between your two halves, almost like there's this dividing line in your mind. Your two halves have been battling, okay? Your two halves. Here you are trying to, you have been trying, you have been trying to, to reconcile your differences, the difference within yourself, um, but you're feeling a little bit exhausted. Like this has been going on for a long time. I'm gonna bet that most of you have struggled with this for your entire life and it's like a lot of your life's challenges kind of boil down to this disconnect between the person you think you want to be, the person you think you should be, the person you think you are, your energy represented by your sun sign, and your inner self. Because with this Aries energy, it's so impulsive and you feel like you don't trust it. You feel like you're almost afraid of what you might do if you let your inner fire out. You're, you're afraid of burning yourself with your fire or especially burning others with your fire. Um, but it's time to trust yourself, time to trust that Aries energy, time to trust, you know, some of you may have, you know, developed some stereotypes about Aries. You might associate it with war and with violence and with anger. Um, but that is only like a subset of the lower frequencies of Aries. So you guys, I would really invite you to feel into the higher frequency of Aries and how it, it all boils down to I am. I am, I am, right? It is the I am presence. It is the spark that lights consciousness. It is, it, it is the beginning of everything. It is absolutely foundational. So if you have been denying your moon energy and to, to, you've all been doing that to different extents, right? But every single human has been doing that. It's just, that's just how things have been, right? You have denied your, your inner fire. You've denied your inner fire. Um, I'm almost seeing like, a red flame with chains around it, but chaining up your fire doesn't work, <laughs> right? You can you can try to put chains around fire all day, but it's not gonna do anything because it's fire, right? It's fire, you can't chain up fire. <sighs> the 
this judgment card. This is so significant because this is the awakening of your inner fire. Okay. This is the awakening of your inner self to let it burn, let it burn, let it burn within you and know that this fire is divinely inspired, divinely guidance. In fact, the fire itself is divine, right? And, and this is like awaken your inner courage, awaken your inner courage. I feel like everybody who has a significant Aries placement has that Aries energy so that you can have the courage, have the get up and go, have the drive uh, in order to succeed at something, in order to face a challenge, in order to face a fear, in order to face something incredibly difficult. You have that fire within you in order to do this. And um, if you have been trying to chain up or if you've been trying to douse your own flame, then you're just like crippling yourself, just absolutely crippling yourself, not allowing your fire to light the way. It's like with your, if you've been dousing your Aries flame, then then that's dousing your own inner light, right? That That's making it so you can't protect yourself, that you can't light your way, and also so that you can't be any good to anybody else. So it's time to take a little bit of risk, okay? Take a little bit of risk. Take that risk. Take that action. Wake up and, like, allow yourself to be the person you've always wanted to be, but the person you've always been afraid to be. Especially, this is going to be such a source of conflict for the people with water, with their sun in a water sign. <laughs> um you know, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, if your sun is in a water sign, you're going to want to kind of like flood out your own inner fire because you will feel like your inner fire is disharmonious, right? If your sun's in a water sign and you want har you want harmony with others, you want harmony within yourself, and, and you feel that, that there's something inside of you, 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 you're maybe even afraid of it, you feel like it's a little bit nefarious, you don't trust it, right? Because it 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 is going to on some level create dissonance and you got to be okay with the dissonance it's like this you know horn this this horn is blaring a trumpet a trumpet out of nowhere you are meant to blow your horn okay um yeah if you're if people are sleeping and suddenly you hear a trumpet blowing it's going to be loud it's going to be startling it's okay to startle people it's okay to startle yourself it's okay to yell and scream it's okay to speak your truth it's okay to like really put yourself out there okay and awakening your inner your inner Aries moon right allowing that to come forth into balance is going to ignite your solar plexus if you guys know that you have solar plexus issues if you have trouble standing up for yourself all of this it's it's like it's really it, it's almost it's almost funny I, it's you know it's not funny but <laughs> you can kind of see the absurdity here right because if you have an Aries moon you have so much courage bravery power and ability to stand up for yourself. You have that all inside of you, but you just haven't been using it. You haven't been tapped into it. It's like a tool. It's like the, you have the perfect tool for the job. You have everything you need. You have your, like the power, the strength and everything, but you just haven't been using it. It's just, it's just there. You just need to let it out. And <laughs> by doing so, you're actually going to solve all your anxieties and worries and struggles because your anxiety, everything you worry about, everything that makes you anxious, everything that you struggle with is actually, you worry that releasing your inner Aries energy is going to make more of that. You think releasing your inner self is going to create more problems, going to create more dissonance, going to create more conflict. You, you feel like you need to keep it all trapped up inside. But <laughs> by releasing it, by embodying it, that's actually going to solve all your problems. Like that, that's the key here. Just let that out. Let that out. And this all ends with this three of wands. You looking to the horizon, you getting your return on your investment, you it's actually this feeling of like a ghost, like a ghost of yourself, like running back into you. This is like a soul retrieval, which is not usually what I get from the three of wands, but I'm seeing like you standing there looking out at the ocean and like, woof, like this, like big piece of your soul, like slams back into you. And it's because it's just like this little blue rock <laughs> that this, this piece that was missing, that's, <laughs> that's the part of yourself that you have been repressing that you've been putting in chains. All you need to do is say like, Hey, like, come on, come back, right? Wake up, wake up. 
and then this piece will be whole again. You're gonna find the piece, you're gonna find the missing piece, and then you're gonna be this whole beautiful, perfect, polished rock, and you're gonna be so solid. <sighs> okay, I think that's what I'm seeing for you guys. Um, so sending you so much love and light, bye. Hello, beautiful Taurus moons. Let's see what your guys' message is. Using the Pacific Northwest Tarot for you guys because this is all plants and animals on here and you guys are so deeply rooted into the earth and the earth plane into like 2D, the 2D earth matrix. And you feel that on a deep level but it's not something you express with others and it's also something that you haven't explored entirely. Like the general feeling I get here is that okay, <laughs> what I was going to say, the high priest and the high priestess came out uh, like exactly, exactly to confirm that. I'll talk about that eight of pentacles in a minute. <laughs> and look, it even matches the box. Okay. You are way, way, way more empathic, intuitive, sensitive than you give yourself credit for. It's like some of you already know that you're empathic, intuitive, and sensitive, but there is a way of looking at your gifts, at your ability to sense energy. Let's just call it that. There's a way of looking at your ability to sense energy that you haven't really even clued into yet. And the trick is because of your Taurus moon, like I feel like so many people watching this video probably have their... Um, sun sign in a water sign and it's a lot of this is going to be learning to kind of break out of those paradigms so you know for some of you obviously not all of you have your sun in, in a your sun in a water sign but you you might kind of have like stereotypes about what it means to be an empath or a highly sensitive person and you're gonna find that your moon sign, your Taurus moon takes you way beyond those stereotypes that being an empath or being sensitive to energy or being psychic isn't only what you thought it was. There's so, so, so much more. And for you guys, it involves like your body, right? Getting con and like your connection to the earth. And this is like, I don't even remember what the word is called, but you know, people who sense energy with their, with their hands. Like, I mean, and like, I'm like that too. Everybody's like that to a degree, right? So it's like how, how much of that do you embody, right? And so for you guys, like examples that are coming to mind are really notice how your body changes and how your body shifts and just how you feel in your body, right? When you walk into a room full of people, do you instantly get angry? That's because you're picking up their vibes, right? And Or do you start clenching your teeth, right? You're picking up their vibes. And here she is. <laughs> um, but also, if you sit down in a chair that somebody was just sitting in, notice how your body shifts. Notice how your consciousness shifts. You are picking up like the vibrational imprint that they left in that chair and you are still feeling it. Okay. It's your, your actual body is like a, a resonator, right? It's a resonator. And there's a huge invitation here to start noticing this, start noticing how much you are already noticing. You are really overlooking how sensitive you are to energy because the way your moon energy your taurus moon is picking up energy in ways that aren't typically talked about okay for you guys um it's like going to a thrift store <laughs> going to a thrift store pay attention to how you feel when you go in there because you are noticing the vibrations coming off of every single one of those old items it's like, you know, some old board game sat in someone's house for 20 years and picked up all these vibrations from that house. And it is still, even though it is just a tiny, tiny little way, right? But you were so sensitive that you're picking up on that. So that's every single item in that thrift store. You're picking up on those vibrations and you can feel it everywhere you go, everywhere you go, everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. So sensitive. And we got the eight of pentacles coming up with the high priestess, letting you know that part of awakening your moon energy is going to be really 
this is like a journey of noticing, right? Noticing how sensitive you already are. You don't really need to do anything to awaken your soul gifts or to activate them because your sensitivity to energy is already there. It is already there. It's just literally a matter of noticing it and it's gonna be a journey of noticing. And my cat is all over you guys. Okay, I guess you can just hang out. Got your kicking foot going? You wanna kick me, huh? <laughs> Eight of Wands, you got eight, eight. Infinity, infinity. <laughs> oh, dearest kitty cat. Her name is Mishka, which means little bear in Russian, um, if I am correct on that. <laughs> we don't speak Russian, that's just what we looked up, so we could be wrong. If anybody speaks Russian, you can correct me, please. <laughs> Three of Cups. Oh, you guys are going to be able to make um, significant headway on your inner alchemy <laughs> and becoming something new. And here you've got more cats. Okay, more cats. I just want to show you something. The bottom of the deck is the Five of Pentacles. Okay, this is so beautiful for Taurus Moon because Taurus Moon wants, I mean, Taurus in general, right, wants luxury, wants to be comfortable. It's those creature comforts because you guys... Um, that, uh, okay, how do I explain? Some of you might feel that focusing on your creature comforts is like materialistic or bad or, you know, not spiritual or something like that or shallow, anything like that. And um, that is absolutely <laughs> not the case, okay? Um, someone with a Taurus sun, for example, tends to understand that the comfort of their home, the comfort of their environment, their creature comforts, that all of that is literally part of what makes life worth living and what makes them feel alive and, and that that is deeply spiritual, right? To be able to have a good meal surrounded with those you love in a, a beautiful location or just in your beautiful, comfortable home, that that is like deeply spiritual and that is actually the meaning of being alive, <laughs> right? To be able to find something that is just so good, um, that it's like, yes, this is why I'm alive. <laughs> um, so if you guys have been experiencing lack, right? Five of Pentacles, if you've been in lack consciousness, it's pointing actually to some kind of feelings of guilt that you feel like you shouldn't allow yourself material comforts. So part of your journey of activating your Taurus moon is gonna be learning to allow yourself to enjoy the physical world because the physical is just as is it is exactly as divine as the spiritual it, it, there's no difference there is no separation between physical and spiritual it's not like the physical world is somehow not spiritual right it's it, it's just all one it's just that this is in physical form <laughs> so definitely you're going to be on this journey of dropping out of that and as soon as you like and and this is going to be a natural thing for you the really cool thing about activating your your lunar energy bringing out your moon sign is that as soon as you allow yourself to do it it's actually a natural process because this energy is entirely within you and you teach it to, you just you just unleash it you just let it flow you don't need to think about it you don't need to figure out how to do it you just it's literally just relaxing and exploring the things that feel good to you right just follow what feels good and i keep hearing in my head like somebody's going but comfort culture comfort culture i comfort culture is bad right comfort culture is bad i mean okay there's a difference between comfort and complacency right there's nothing wrong and there's a difference between contentment and complacency comfort and contentment are beautiful complacency when you're just really kind of immersed in this lower level distraction and you're just not motivated to do anything and you're just kind of being like there's, there's a difference right there's a difference and you like being content and being comfortable is is a path to inner peace right it's such an important energy to embody because then you embody that energy and then that energy of comfort and contentment ripples out those are absolutely important energies to have drop out of these ideas that you need to sacrifice your physical world in order to be spiritual those are old ideas that you know back in darker in darker energy in denser energy when it was so much harder to access your like spirituality people ended up being ascetics right asceticism and people started rejecting and denying the physical form because it was like there just wasn't enough energy to go around and everything was so difficult and people had to really um 
deny themselves in order to access the spiritual realm, but that's just not the case anymore, right? Especially not for you guys. It's like, it's just take that idea and just like throw it away. It's not serving you. <laughs> and so dropping out of all of these ideas of like self-sacrifice and asceticism and being anti-materialistic, no, this is, you guys are meant to see the spiritual in physical form. You're meant to like look out at your garden or look out at a sunset, look out at a mountain and be like, this is the meaning of being alive, right? This is it. This is so divinely perfect, perfection in physical form, divinity in physical form. Um, and that's going to lead you into this place of this emperor energy, feeling like this mountain lion. Okay, look, look at this beautiful mountain lion. She's sitting there. I mean, I guess it's... <laughs> I guess it's a he, it's the emperor, right? But, you know, she or he, whatever you want, <laughs> or they. And, like, on top of the mountain, right? So abundant, so sovereign. That's where this is heading you. You just need to unleash, unleash your lunar energy. And you guys, I feel like, really have a lot of potential to make progress on this inner alchemy uh, faster than maybe some other people. Like, it's going to be coming up for you sooner, especially if you're watching this in 2022, 2023 because you know the nor north node is passing through Taurus and Uranus is making this really long transit through Taurus so that's going on for even longer than 2022 and 2023 but that means that like the sign of Taurus is being really really activated and I actually have a bunch of other videos about that <laughs> if you want to check those out I've been kind of obsessed with the north node in Taurus essentially the north node is transiting over your moon and going to be pulling this out right like right out of you the north node is pulling this out of you just bam um so you can check to see when Taurus and Uranus are transiting your moon because around that period um you know that you're going to be feeling it the whole time these planets are in Taurus but it intensifies and peaks around the time that those plan uh, that those points transit your moon and it's just going to be like pulling it out of you so it might feel like stepping out of your comfort zone and some things that no longer serve you might be kind of get ripped away from you right they might drop out of your life they might drop out of your reality but like you're, you're going to be rapidly 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 right this rapid because eight of wands is like just fucking fast this is rapid, rapid energy. And this Three of Cups, I, <laughs> I've i already learned to associate the Three of Cups with that alchemy, with that hybridization of the self. Your solar, your lunar, and your human vessel all combining together to create your new hybrid self. So you take whatever your sun sign is, whatever it is, and then you combine it with your Taurus moon, and you go, okay, what what do you get when you want to combine those two? If I were to put them in a blender, what would come out? Right, put it, put your solar and your lunar self in a quantum blender and find out what's going to happen. And you know, you guys, you don't even need to do any of this because you Taurus is getting these really cool transits and it's just going to be happening to you. It's going to be happening to you. Um, so you know, interesting things happening in your life, lots of shifts, but it's all in service of this inner alchemy so that you can become this hybrid, this new hybrid being where your solar and lunar selves are not just in balance, but they've also combined to create something new. And you're going to feel like the fucking emperor or empress or who, the ruler, right? Whatever. You're going to feel <laughs> on top of the world. So that's what I'm seeing for you guys. Sending you so much love and light. Bye. Hello, everybody who has their moon in Gemini. I am super excited for this reading because I also have my moon in Gemini. <laughs> and I think I want to just straight up address this Gemini myth, okay? <laughs> that there's everybody has this idea that Gemini is two-faced, right? It's symbolized with the twins, and and I don't know why... I, I just, I see so much stuff about people picking on Gemini energy, saying that Geminis are two-faced. Geminis have a self they show the world and a self they keep to themselves. And I think that that, okay, there might be like something to that just to like acknowledge where people are coming from. But I actually see Gemini as it's not just two, it's a multitude, <laughs> a multitude. Gemini generates thoughts, Okay, Gemini generates personalities. It's just like a, it's like the constant generation of bam, 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 bam. Like whatever you can generate with your air energy, 
Gemini, so many thoughts. Like your moon in Gemini, you think a lot. <laughs> you think so much and you think about literally everything. Um, and you can check your, where is your Gemini moon in your chart, right? So my Gemini moon is in the eighth house. So what do I like to think about? I like to think about eighth house stuff. So I'm not surprised that I'm a tarot reader that makes these kind of videos, right? <laughs> So you, the, the thing that you like to think about is really influenced by the house placement of your Gemini moon. But um, it's like I can't even talk about Gemini moon without acknowledging the incredible generative, generative power of your mind. And to have your moon in an air sign is interesting because the moon represents your inner landscape and especially your, mo your emotions. But to have it in an air sign means that your emotions and your thoughts are kind of the line is blurry, right? Because air energy represents your thoughts, represents your mind, and your emotions are typically considered, you know, water energy, right? So it's strange to have your moon in an air sign. It makes the line between your thoughts and feelings really blurry. You can feel like, you know, maybe even when you were younger, or maybe even now, you might have like been confused when people talk about differentiating their thoughts and feelings, because for you, they're so like hopelessly entangled. <laughs> okay, so first card out, Wheel of Fortune. Oh, there's another upside down. Flip card in here, Six of Cups. For me, this that Six of Cups is always about a past life, past life energy coming through, past life energy. Some of you might be remembering past lives like in a really vivid, type of visual way or an experiential way, but if, even if you're not, you're, re you're retrieving the energy of your past lives and it's not important. If you don't get images of your past life, then it's not important for you to do so. It is more than enough to just re retrieve the memory and the gifts from your past lives. Uh, because apparently, you Gemini moons are starting a new soul cycle with this Wheel of Fortune. Starting a new soul cycle. But it's uh, what they just showed me is like before, before the new cycle really gets underway, it's like imagine a wheel, you know when, you, when you're riding a bike and you first step on the pedal, it's hard to get the wheel moving because I think you're actually moving uphill. I think you're, you guys are moving uphill and it's hard to get the wheel moving. It's like a lot of pressure needs to be exerted and just while you're getting this wheel moving, this little bit of a slowdown before the momentum really kicks in is so that you can retrieve some of this past energy. So how does this, what does this have to do with bringing your moon energy, letting it come forth, letting it come forth? I feel like I, I can definitely relate to this. And so I, I think a lot of you are going to be able to re relate to this too. Um, it's going to depend on what your sun sign is and you know where your moon is placed, but it feels like some of those judgments that people make about Gemini energy that you, you, you have actually internalized it and you judge yourself for it. You feel like your Gemini self is shallow or flaky or just silly or just can't ever stick to one thing because you keep generating all of these thoughts and feelings and you kind of bounce all over the place. And especially if your sun sign is, we got the moon right here, especially if your sun sign is in a, um, the moon over the tower and when I looked at this tower I just got really dizzy like really dizzy okay so yeah this is a massive shift in how you perceive yourself okay a massive shift in how you perceive yourself because you've been perceiving yourself with your sun sign and this is gonna especially relate to people who whose solar energy is in a very serious sign so to use myself as an example Capricorn Sun Gemini moon <laughs> very, very different, right? When I go out into the world, I'm like serious and professional and like I play by the rules and you know, I just do the whole stereotypical Capricorn thing. But then when I'm at home, when I'm like left completely to my own devices, then I'm all like super crazy, flaky, colorful Gemini person. And, um, <laughs> and it's strange, right? It is this weird dissonance to go, wow, like these two halves of myself are so, 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 so different. So especially for, you know, if your sun sign is in Capricorn or Taurus or even Virgo, right? The earth signs. 
and Aquar or Aquarius. Possibly even Cancer. It's like these more serious face type of signs that want to like a, that want to do adulting, right? <laughs> you want but your solar self might want to like be an adult, right? Be serious, be professional, you know, do that whole thing. But Gemini is like no, Gemini just wants to be like be playful and it's like you got to let that playfulness of yourself out and you got to be allowed you must you absolutely must allow yourself to explore the thing that your gemini moon is interested in okay i, I just can't get away from using myself as a personal example here because i am the gemini moon and i just i can't i can't get away from it so i'm just gonna roll with it <sighs> For so long, okay, since my Gemini moon is in the 8th house, I had this deep, deep, deep fascination with all things to do with the 8th house, right? The occult, mysteries, psychic ability, intuition, um, and this also delves into like, like really darker kind of stuff and sex, right? All of that 8th house stuff, so fascinated, but I always repressed it. I always said, no, that's too weird. No, I can't allow myself to explore those things. No, 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 no. I cut myself off from my own self. I like cut my own Gemini moon out until finally um, in 2020 when the North Node transited over my Gemini moon in the 8th house. So all you guys recently, you know, in 2020 to all the way through 2021, the North Node was transiting Gemini, and that was to pull your Gemini self forward, right? So the, the thing is here, you got to let your inner child out to play. You got to explore your interests. With Gemini, your interest could be literally anything, and it will be influenced by your house placement. So you got to, you got to explore it, right? You got to explore it. You, you just... <laughs> Follow your interests, allow yourself to follow the breadcrumb trail, allow yourself to go down the rabbit hole, allow yourself to go down the rabbit hole because there is going to be like a giant piece of pie at the end of that rabbit hole. That is how you get to the, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, um, especially the more you have repressed your Gemini moon. Um, the more you have been cutting yourself off from the pot of gold. It's like you thought you could get to the pot of gold by being, by following your solar energy. And it's like, no, you have to get to the pot of gold by following your lunar energy. And this tower moment is, it's like, let yourself fall. Let yourself fall. Just dive right in, dive in head first, right? If you feel the ground start to rumble and you're on a bridge, that's my cat just suddenly going nuts over here. If you're on a bridge and the ground is start to rumble, it's like, don't wait for the bridge to fall. Just jump off head first. <laughs> okay. And that's going to allow your lunar self to shine forth, to shine forth. I want like another card on this. Okay. I'm going to have to kick my cat off. And she was not happy about that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I feel so much embarrassment coming from you guys. It's like you're embarrassed to even explore some of the things you want to explore because you might think it's superficial. Like you might be like, oh, that you just like really want to get into fashion or hair or painting your nails or like watching The Bachelorette. Like something you, your, your solar self is going to tell you that your interest is silly and shallow and stupid or just like not worthwhile or that you shouldn't bother exploring it because you might only explore it for like a little while. It's like, no, you have to go for it. If you find it interesting, you have to follow your interest. Always. Gemini Moon absolutely must follow the thing that you think is most interesting. No matter how silly it makes you feel, right? <laughs> and and there's going to come a point where you're going to have to show other people. It's like, yeah, you know, I actually have this really huge anime collection. Maybe your friends think anime is silly, right? Um, or maybe people think that the video games you play are silly. Or maybe even that it's silly that you want to play video games at all. But it's like, no, you eventually you're going to have to show people what you're into. You're going to have to show people what you do. It's like coming out of the Gemini closet. Or like coming out of the spiritual closet. Or coming out of the nerd closet. Or coming out of the geeky closet. Like whatever closet you're in. <laughs> It, you're going to have to come out of it to some level, right? To some level. And slowly. You don't need to force it, but it's like just get really aligned with yourself and feel into, oh, is this the moment where I share my inner world with somebody? Is this the moment where I just say, yeah, like I'm into that. I, I do that weird, weird, crazy, bizarre thing that you think is probably kind of lame. It's like you got to, you got to just let yourself go with it. serenity and that 
that is how you find your inner peace by allowing yourself, giving yourself permission to explore literally anything that interests you. And I'm okay saying that to you guys because I know you're not gonna go out and do something that harms an innocent just because somebody on YouTube said, go out and do whatever interests you, right? I know that you guys have integrity and I know you're not gonna take that the wrong way, right? <laughs> Follow your interest. And speaking of that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, five of pentacles at the bottom of the deck. And again, I am the example for this because following your passion, following your interests is what is going to break you out of the five of crystals, is what is going to break you out of that lack mentality um, and is going to allow you to have this wheel of fortune, this change in your fortunes because whatever you're interested, you can actually make money doing, believe it or not, right? When I used to think tarot cards were weird and stupid and I was really embarrassed to admit I wanted any, and now I have like 40 decks, right? And I, I do this as um, a small business on the side of my regular job. <laughs> and like I have made money doing tarot readings, right? People pay me a fairly large amount of money for private readings. And <laughs> it, it like blows my mind. It blows my mind that allowing myself to follow this weird interest, this interest I was embarrassed to admit that I had, I followed it, I followed my passion and became obsessed with it. And then I started a business doing it and now I make money doing it. <laughs> and it, it's just this snowball effect. So following your weird niche interest, there's like potential that that takes you to your pot of gold. That's why it's so important to follow your moon energy, to follow it. That is how you find your pot of gold and that's how you find inner peace. By a lot, like, like fly your freak flag, Gemini moon, fly your freak flag, whatever your freak is, fly it, explore it, <laughs> go all in, go to the bottom of the rabbit hole and then go to the next rabbit hole and then the next rabbit hole. Just keep exploring. Okay, I see Gemini is primarily an explorative energy. Keep exploring. That's how you get to your pot of gold. So I love you guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Okay, we are on to Cancer Moon. It's so interesting to have your moon in Cancer because that's like, you know, the moon is rule or the moon rules Cancer, right? They're closely associated and it's like the hidden of the hidden. Cancer energy, the bottom of the chart, it's that sacred space. It represents the home, the divine mother, and your emotional body. So there is something very hidden here, very, very hidden, especially if you happen to have a, a prominent Scorpio placement in your chart. This is like There's, you guys are going to have to dig a big hole. <laughs> dig a big hole inside of yourself to, to get to something. Something is buried very, very deeply. Very deeply. <laughs> Four of Cups with this panda. The th it's like you haven't figured out what satisfies you in life. You haven't figured out what satisfies you. You don't know what you want. Oh, because you guys are, of course, massively overwhelmed by the emotions and needs of others. And that makes it difficult for you to decide or to even understand or recognize what you actually want and what you actually feel. That's why you're going to have to do this deep, deep, deep digging in order to let your Cancer Moon shine. I feel like the Cancer Moon is going to have a particularly hard time allowing that Cancer that moon energy, your lunar self to come forth because it's like doubling down on doesn't want to be seen, right? Your moon sign is internal. It doesn't want to be seen. Cancer, um, cancer has 
this really fiery streak because the thing with cancer is it's the balance between masculine and feminine, the balance between fire and water, but especially when it is in your moon sign, that masculine element, the fire element is really watered down, really muted. And it, it's, it's just something, something is hiding. This is a feeling of the hidden and something hiding so much. And I can't even like get to the card, right? Cause it doesn't, it doesn't want to come out. You don't want to come out of your shell. <laughs> You don't want to come out of your shell. You got your, your, your little crab claws all out. There we go. Nine of cups. <laughs> Could we get more watery? You got cups, cups. This is letting me know that there is something you desperately want to show. You desperately want to express. Because cancer should, you know, cancer should be expressive. But it oftentimes doesn't know how to express itself. And then when cancer does express itself, it often expresses itself by pinching somebody, right? it gets explosive. I just saw a shell that is getting cracked, okay? Like a, a, like a crab shell being cracked. So if you guys have something that comes along and cracks your shell, it is essentially your higher self doing you a favor and saying, I'm gonna help you come out of your shell. I'm gonna crack the shell wide open for you. You're going to be cracked open. Movement of cups. <laughs> Three cups in a row, guys. You are definitely watery. <laughs> and when that shell is cracked open, that's going to allow your inner self to like gush forth. To gush forth. So. Sky Father. The Hierophant. Oh no, that's the Emperor. I always get those confused in a couple of decks. The High Priestess. There, <laughs> there we go. When your shell is cracked open and when you allow your inner self to gush forth into the world, that is going to bring you to this balance, this balance between masculine and feminine. That is, what was I just talking about, right? I just, I love it when that happens, when the cards come out to confirm something I already said. Um, so for you guys, a large part of your experience of allowing your lunar self to come out and play is going to be balancing your masculine and feminine because cancer sign like is the divine feminine. So when you have cancer or Capricorn energy in your chart, that really highlights that gendered duality thing. And that's going to play out for every single one of you in like massively different ways, right? It, it could be literally anything to do with that, um, for some of you, this might actually have something to do with like your physical body, your own gender identity or your own sexual identity or your sexual preferences. Like any of that is possible here. For others of you, it's just your energetic balance, right? Your energetic balance. So this goes beyond just balancing your solar and lunar energy, your sun sign and your moon sign. This is really balancing your solar plexus and sacral chakra, getting them into harmony. I feel like... Um, you sometimes flip-flop between the two. So you flip-flop between solar plexus and sacral. You flip between being assertive and being a little bit of a doormat. <laughs> you flip-flop between masculine and feminine in some way. Different for everybody how that manifests, but there's this flip-flopping. And something's missing here. Let me get another. I want to get you an animal card. I haven't... So you're the fourth reading I'm done and I haven't drawn any oracle cards for anybody else yet, but <laughs> butterfly with the soul. So this butterfly, first of all, I already mentioned Scorpio energy. So for some of you, it's really digging deep into the root of what you've hidden deep down inside and then coming out into this metamorphosis, really getting in touch with your soul, right? You've got high priestess and this butterfly and the butterfly here is, it's really small. I know you can't see it, it says the soul. <sighs> How can you be the emperor sometimes and then the high priestess at other times? How can you do both of those at one time? And also what happens if you combine 
the two? What is the, the result of that? What is the hybridization? What is the hybridiz hybridization of the emperor and the high priestess? You have to imagine, what do you get? <laughs> okay, so this is actually, this goes really deep. First of all, to just acknowledge your moon in Cancer, you are the high priestess, right? You are massively intuitive, more so than you give yourself credit for. Highly sensitive to energy, right? Um, <laughs> but what you're playing out in this way, whatever your journey is of harmonizing masculine and feminine and finding the third thing, like what do you get when you put those two together? How do you create this third thing? What is the product? What is the answer to the equation? This actually goes all the way out to a real cosmic level where, okay, you know, you, you know, we're sitting around, we're tracing back consciousness all the way up to the original source. And then what we end up with is you get to, okay, the original source of light, like the one light source, right? The one light source. And then you get the void. The one light source comes out of the void. But that it's and, and that that for a while that was as far back as I could trace things. I was like, okay, so you've got the void, you've got the you've got the light, but that's still a duality, right? That's still polarity. And I was like, there's got to be something beyond that. There's got to be something above that. There has to be a oneness between source and void, between light and void, between light and night, right? So <laughs> that's how deep this goes. That's how high level this goes. What do you get? This is just something to ponder. No one's gonna have an answer for this. What do you get if you took the source of all light? and the void itself and put them together. How do you put them back together? How do you fuse them back together? How do you fuse masculine and feminine, like the primordial, primordial, primordial manifestations of like the original duality of source and void, right? How do you put them back together? And what came before and what comes after? Because they were one to begin with. What was it? What was that even like? What does it mean? What, what, what does it feel like? What is it? So this, you guys are working on coming into a level of unity that is absolutely primordial, absolutely primordial. But for you guys, I really feel like it, even when you come into that third thing, into that hybrid, for you guys, for whatever reason, it's because of that Cancerian duality, those two streams of masculine and feminine, you're going to be like maintaining the duality while still encompassing that duality with the third thing, with the neutral force. It's very interesting. I feel like for most other moon signs, it's it's almost like the, the, sun, the lunar, the solar and the lunar selves dissolve and completely dissolve and get completely like baked into something new and become a new third thing. For you guys, it's like the two actually stay more individuated and yet they remain individuated while while still creating that third thing while still becoming that hybrid within the neutral space so very deep kind of defies words here guys <laughs> you guys are going very deep you are living playing out like the primordial experience of polarity um and un and reunification you are playing that out the deepest level of that, the most primordial, primordial level of that, you are playing that out in your human existence. However that resonates for you, <laughs> however it plays out for you, that's what's happening. <sighs> and I know that this was probably just very confusing, but I don't think there's anything else I can say about this because your experience is going to be <sighs> so unique, so intuitively guided and that's actually the thing. You're going to have to allow your lunar energy to show you the way on this one. Your solar energy, whatever your sun sign is, is going to have to just back off. And you're going to have to let your mind back off. You're going to have to let your intuition and your emotions and just your feelings and your sense of, of timing and your internal compass, like it's just going to have to be a completely intuitive journey, right? It's the priestess path. It is walking in complete surrender, complete surrender to your life's journey and to the experience. There's no way to think your way through this. Thinking is not going to help you. Don't try to figure this out with your mind. You'll, it's not going to work, right? Your mind will receive in divinely inspired insights. It'll go like, get the insight, get the insight, get the insight. Exactly when it's supposed to, but thinking about this and trying to chew through something. I mean, as coming back to Scorpio again, if any of you were like a Scorpio son or had some kind of specific like 
thing with Pluto going on, you, you might do this looping thing where you try to figure it out, 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 try to figure it out. That's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. You gotta, you gotta try and stop the, like, the processing loop, <laughs> okay? You gotta try and stop that scorpionic processing loop and just trust the process and just feel what there is to feel go in the direction that feels right for now and then just completely flow with it you have to surrender to this one guys there's no other way forward <laughs> so <laughs> i'm wishing you guys so much luck and sending you so much love and light bye Hello, beautiful Leo moons. Got the Grimalkin tarot for you guys. This is all about cats. And it's all very yellow. It's like super, super Leo. <laughs> the first thing I'm hearing uh, is come out and play. Come out and play. Do something just for fun. Do something just for fun. Your, your Leo moon... is very, very attracted to feeling playful. It's almost more that you wanna feel playful. It doesn't matter really what you're playing at or who you're playing with or what you're doing. It's to embody that energy of playfulness. A lot of time we associate Leo with like this like strength, right? Like being the lion, being almost like being the predator. Um, and yes, and like being a king, being a ruler, right? Leo's often, there's this thing, people connect Leo sons with rulership and leadership, which it is. But for the Leo moon, it's a little less serious. It's a little bit more of the hidden side of Leo basically wanting to come out and play. To come out and play. <laughs> Queen of Cups, isn't that interesting? The first card we get is a, like a water energy, right? It's come out and play. this cat is reaching up almost looking like she wants to swat that bird but it, to me this is a playful a very playful thing temperance king of cups you got queen of cups and the king of cups this is so much water energy because temperance is watery. I mean, it's also fiery. It's tempering fire with water. Oh, I get it now. I get it now. Four of pentacles. Eight of wands. Okay. Oh, these cards are kind of glaring. Maybe if I prop them up like this. <laughs> okay, so... I see the kind of struggle here. Leo energy wants to shine and to some extent it actually wants to burn, it wants to ignite, it wants to shine, shine, shine. But the moon is hidden. <laughs> the moon only wants to reflect. The moon doesn't want to show the world its real self. So there is, and the sun is also like Leo, right? Connected with the sun, connected with the solar energy. So there is this weird kind of identity crisis you guys might be having without even really knowing it. <laughs> you might not know that you're having an identity crisis, which sounds strange, but it's like, oh, and here, here comes the cat to, to help me articulate this. <laughs> okay, this is gonna go a few different ways, but it feels like you sometimes have behaviors or you act a certain way around people in a way that isn't very authentic to you, but it feels like that's just the way you're supposed to act, right? It, it might be like, maybe you, you feel like you have to bring all of the energy to a room. So you get really kind of, you, you kind of put on this bravado and you put on a show, like you have to put on a show for people because you feel like they're not delivering any energy. And maybe you feel, maybe you're uncomfortable with silence. <laughs> maybe you're uncomfortable with people sitting around being quiet and you feel like you have to bring the energy and you have to put on this show, but maybe you don't always want to do that. Maybe you have like a large social circle you find yourself maintaining and then you, but you don't really want to be doing that. 
Um, maybe for some of you, this is social conditioning, right? Where you find yourself acting in certain ways that don't really resonate with who you deeply, truly, really are. It's, it's this weird tension between who you think you should be and who you really are. Because this, this is a very unique thing to have your moon in the sign that is really so closely associated with the sun, right? That is very strange. It is very strange and it's a very unique energy. And I've never really thought about this before. Um, what would the sun be like if it was immersed in water? That's why you guys have all of this, this, this water energy coming up. Your sun energy is... already immersed in water it's so interesting it's like okay i'm starting to get a clearer idea of what this is about um your external self has gotten has confused your internal self speak since your moon is ruled by the sun and we're talking about the balance between your solar and lunar energy, there is this strange thing that is happening. This doesn't happen in the same way with other people. This is like unique to Leo moons where your external environment, all the people around you, and even just your solar self, so your sun sign, your sun sign energy, and all of your external influence has like inf almost like infected. It's like in it's bled in, right? It's bled in. It has really, really influenced your lunar energy and it has kind of overwhelmed your lunar energy to the almost to the point where maybe some of you this might sound strange but maybe some of you might even feel like you don't know who you are on the inside or you don't even know what people mean when they talk about your internal self um very strange almost like maybe you feel that on the inside you are, are a collection of everyone you've ever met you are a collection of the people that you spend the most time with right it's like that saying you are the you are the sum or the average of the people that you spend the most time with like the five people so for you guys are really going to have to drop away from on the one hand dropping away from external influences right like getting dropping out of social condi conditioning dropping out of like what your friends and family think you should say do and be um but also your soul your solar self your sun sign so take a look at whatever your sun sign is and realize that that is not who that is not your lunar self your solar self and your lunar self are different they're two different things they are distinct and it's going to take like a lot of soul searching a lot of soul searching to discover who you really are on the inside who you really are i think you guys have a little bit of a more of an uphill battle it's going to take some clearing okay but you okay but you are going to find success at this here's justice here's the balance okay here's the balance coming into balance your solar self and your lunar self coming into balance with the black cat is coming to assist you right here she is here she is she's coming to assist you oh she's kicking me oh she wants to play <laughs> So who are you on the inside? Who are you truly on the inside? Who are you away from the influences of others? Who are you away from the influence of your own mind? Maybe your thoughts, maybe you often override your emotions with your thoughts. You override your emotions with your thoughts. Stop doing that. <laughs> Feel your feelings and allow yourself to play. You guys are gonna be discovering who you really are through action, through action. You're gonna discover who you are through playfulness. You need to take um, some kind of activity, something that brings you joy, something that makes you feel like a child again, something that is very, very playful and something that makes your soul sing. Find whatever makes your soul sing and actually do it, right? Actually do it. It's like get, get out there on your rollerblades, right? Um, go surfing, watch a funny TV show, watch a silly rom-com, right? Do something that brings out who you really are. It's like, for you guys, it, it's more important to, it's almost like ext extrospecting, which isn't, isn't a word, but it's actually a word that my 
husband uses because he's very extroverted and I'm always telling him like, you know, you need to do your inner work. You need to, you know, introspect and go within and all of that. And he doesn't like that. He says, no, extroverts, ext extrovert, instead of, in instead of introspecting, he says extroverts, extrospect. <laughs> he says that when you look outside of yourself, you see reflections of who you really are, but you need to be able to recognize the true reflections. So by taking action or by looking outside of yourself, you're going to be very careful to identify what what reflections are true reflections of you. Not everything that is reflected back to you is a reflection of you. That's why I think it would, will be helpful for a lot of you to do like to really like get away for a while, like like pull back, pull your energy back for a little bit. Maybe maybe for you a little bit is five minutes. Maybe for a little some of you a little bit is five months, right? Whatever it is, but you need to get in your own energy to be able to understand who you really are on the inside. And that way, when you go back out into the world, when you start interacting with the world again, and when you start doing things, you can decide which reflections are actually accurate reflections of you and then that's going to like upgrade your interface between your inner world and your outer world it's like the interface has gotten all bloody like bloody i meant to say blurry <laughs> i didn't mean to say bloody but weird okay um it just it really feels like your external world and your solar self has bled into your insides it's like bled in and really influenced and gotten you confused about who you really are on the inside and you probably are going to find that you are way more playful than you think you are, right? There's this playfulness, there's this inner child. For some of you, this is going to involve like inner child healing. Um, and that's going to get you out of this feeling of stagnancy, right? If you feel stagnant, this four of pentacles, it's because you're not letting yourself play. By letting yourself play, by letting yourself just have fun simply for the sake of having fun, that's when you're going to discover what really lights you up and what really makes your life worth living. So find something that lets you play. This, these are the pieces of advice that have come through for you. Let me try to sum this up because I know this was kind of, um, took me a little bit to figure this one out because it is very outside of my personal experience. So it took me a minute. <laughs> one, understand that you are highly influenced by the people around you, by social conditioning and by the energy of your sun sign. Okay, you've been influencing your own self. This isn't only about other people. It's also just about the dominant energy inside of yourself, right? the energy represented by your sun sign. So just start to notice that, start to notice when the energy from outside of you is like bleeding in and influencing your inner self. Second of all, some of you are probably going through a deep identity crisis when, around the time you see this video and know that it's okay for you to not know who you are for a little while because that, that feeling of, I don't know who I am, I don't know what I want, I don't know what I should do, that doesn't last forever, that is absolutely just a phase, it is a type of awakening, it is an awakening to the self, okay? Three, try to spend some time just in your own energy, doing stuff that you enjoy, like go camping if that's what you like and like allow yourself to play, like go in the water, play in the water, right? Do something playful because you will find through the actions that you enjoy, through the activities that you enjoy, like literally any type of activity, whatever activity you enjoy, that's part of what's going to help you discover who you really are because you're going to be like, wow, this lights me up. This is really fun. This makes me feel alive and free. And you need to do more of that because that's going to help you access this inner self and it's going to help you learn who you are through action. And finally, when you feel ready to kind of interface with the world again more, be really discerning when you see what's being reflected back at you because sometimes somebody is reflecting yourself back to you. You might meet somebody and go, wow, this person resonates so much and they're really into the same thing that I do and they have the same sense of humor. If it really resonates and lights you up and makes you feel alive and free, that's how you know it's reflecting something about yourself. If other people come along and they try to make you change or they just make you feel down, they make you cringe in on yourself, they make you feel like you should be more serious, anything like that, essentially any reflection from the world that makes you feel bad, that is not, that is not an accurate reflection of you. Don't take that energy on. Don't take it on. Sit in your own energy. Follow what makes you feel playful, what makes, what makes you laugh and what is fun. Okay, so important. That is how you will remember who you really are on the inside. So good luck, guys. Sending you so much love and light. Bye.
Hello, my beautiful Virgo moons. I get such a Virgo vibe off of this deck. That's why I've been using it for you guys, the Wildwood Tarot. Mm, it's so, <laughs> so Virgo. So Virgo in the more ancient, the more primordial, the more earthly sense of Virgo. I know there is this thing about Virgo being the perfectionist and the homemaker and the caretaker and the garden witch and all of that. And all of that is true. But there is such a deeper level of Virgo that I think we don't often talk about. It's the energy of the hermit and of the like initiate priestess, the priestess path. I'm getting massive shivers when I said that. <laughs> Some of you, this is your, you're allowing your Virgo moon to shine forth is going to allow you to walk the path of whatever you're being initiated into, right? You're having an initiation right now, at the time you see this video, and it's going to be a little different for everybody. For a lot of you, the priestess path, the priestess path, the son of life, <laughs> you are being activated from within Seven of Vessels, Morning. Eight of Stones, Skill. Ten of Bows, Responsibility. And the Green Woman. There you guys are, right? Okay, this is like a paradigm shift, an identity paradigm shift. Um, that's not going to work there. Let's do that. <sighs> what are you mourning? Okay. That's the first, first question I'm going to put out for you. The seven of vessels, this is seven of cups, which in this deck is, it doesn't really represent choices the way the seven of cups usually does mourning. This is like offerings at, you know, a grave site here. What are you mourning? For some of you, you might be mourning. You might be in mourning. You might be feeling a sense of grief um, because of, you know, a loss of a loved one, something like that. So I'm just going to throw that out there for those of you, if that applies to you, right? For, but on a, on a more general level, and I think on a happier note, what, what a lot of you are mourning is the loss of your previous self, the loss of your old self, the son of life. This is you coming alive, you coming alive uh, on a whole new level. And this is a paradigm shift of your, of your own self. It's like you thought you were one person and now you're finding out that you are changing so much that you have, are having a paradigm shift that is so deep that you're actually turning into someone else. And it, it might be bizarre and freaky. <laughs> and this really makes sense now that you're walking this path of the initiate, you're having this initiation and it's a massive paradigm shift. You know, you guys at the, t at the time that you're like really awakening your Virgo moon. Um, I definitely feel that some of you have recently gone through a very significant awakening experience. Maybe you're ha having it like literally today, right? Others of you who've already been walking your spiritual path for however long it's been, right? Then this is a whole new level of awakening. And, and also for, for Virgo, right? Specifically for Virgo, this is awakening to your dedication to service, to service, to, to selfless service to the collective. How you serve is going to be different for everyone, but some of you are definitely going to be feeling that it's time for you to step up into some kind of leadership role or in some kind of healing role or some kind of, um, caretaking role, caregiving role, caregiving role. And there's just this feeling of this lot. Like it's like you're this feeling that you're almost, it feels like you might be betraying who you used to be like you all, And like, it's that maybe you actually used to like who you like, who you used to be, or at least if at the very least, even if your yourself had problems, at least that's who you were. And you don't want to just let your old self go. You don't want to just betray your old self by letting it go. And I've really been through this where you have a paradigm shift that is so extreme on your sense of identity. You'd go, well, I can't just become a whole new person. <laughs> like I can't just betray my old self. Well, like, what does that mean for my entire life up till now? Is my whole life just wasted? <laughs> that kind of feeling. And it's like, no, <laughs> you were who you were. And now you're still you. You're always you. You're not actually becoming someone new. 
you're becoming more of yourself, right? And the person that you don't need to be anymore, those aspects of yourself are fading away, fading away, and, and it's allowing your true self to really shine forth. So this period of grief that you have, whatever you're grieving for, it is temporary. I promise you it is temporary because you're coming up into the into the green woman and you're coming up to putting down your burdens. So you guys are in a deep, deep level of learning right now. For whatever reason, the way that you're going to allow your Virgo moon to shine and the way you're going to get in tune with your Virgo moon, it, it's by learning something. It's by walking this initiation path. Uh, some of you, you know, this could be going to school. This could be learning a new skill so you can change your career. This could be learning some type of energy healing. This could be learning to read cards. This could be like starting a family and become like leaving your career to become a homemaker, right? Um, <laughs> maybe some of you um, enjoy calling yourselves domestic engineers, right? Understanding that if you are the parent at home, raising your kids and running the whole household that you know if you had to be paid if you had to be paid for all the work that you do in the house you would be making six figures a year right you, it's like nobody could afford to pay you to to do everything that you do in the home right um so whatever it is that whatever it is that you're doing whatever initiation you're on whatever you're learning whatever skill you're studying some of you you might be getting really deep into like esoteric arts really studying deep into history even just whatever it is for you go with this initiation, go with it and go with the thing that you were learning, go with the new skill that you're practicing because that's part of your path here is to like perfect this skill. That there, there we come back to Virgo being the perfectionist, but it's that you are actually destined to come into a high level of skill and it comes from your intuition. It comes from your inner world, right? And it will even be reflected in your inner landscape, right? This is this high level of skill and you're not quite at the top of the mountain yet. Here you are, you've been carrying this burden, you've been carrying it so far. You are so close to the top. Look at, look at this person, they are so close, they are so close. They are carrying um, like a bundle of wood to the top of the mountain. At the top of this mountain there is this bonfire. So at the top of the mountain, this is like, some of you it might resonate like a party, like, like a celebration at the top. Others of you this might resonate as a sacred space, This that this is, um like a sacred, like a temple on top of a mountain, right? Ruins with standing stones, somewhere where you can complete your initiation and become the next level of yourself. You're so close. You just got to get up this little bit more of this path. And that is how, that's how you, that's how you let your Virgo moon shine forth by studying, by walking the path of initiation and by learning and practicing this skill and knowing that you are so close to this moment of alchemy where you I feel like, like when you get to this and actually this is really funny this is really cool look at this when you get to the top and you get to this fire at the top of this mountain what's going on the green woman is there the green woman this beautiful mysterious like goddess of the forest right there she is with her cauldron there she is with her cauldron you are bringing the wood to ignite the fire. And what is this cauldron representing? Like this is alchemy, right? This is everything being boiled down, everything being boiled down, boiled down and cooked down to make something new, to make something brand new. So that is where into this pot, what's gonna go? Into the pot's gonna go your sun, your sun sign, your solar energy, your Virgo moon. It's all gonna go into the pot, plus everything else that you've carried with you. Everything that you are goes into the pot and it's gonna be boiled down and transformed like a magical potion, <laughs> okay? And then you're going to become this entirely new reinvented version of yourself that's gonna feel so much more like you, so much more authentic, but it's also gonna be something that no one has ever really seen before, right? You're gonna be shocked. You're gonna be surprised at how, you're gonna be surprised at how good this soup is, okay? <laughs> this potion, whatever's being cooked in this cauldron, that's gonna be you. Once it's done, once the soup is done, that's gonna be the new you and you're gonna be amazed at how delicious it is and how it can nourish others. You're gonna be able to nourish others. Virgo Moon is so, like such a good listener, so good at helping other people through their problems, so good at supporting others. And maybe at times you have found your, your naturally supportive and nurturing role. Maybe sometimes you've found that to be a great burden right? Sometimes it's like, 
if I didn't have so many people to take care of, <laughs> like maybe I wouldn't be so tired and I would have more time for myself, right? So, so important with Virgo energy to take that time for yourself and to do the self-care, do the self-nurturing. And it's really like, this is just, this is beyond self-care. This is do what makes you feel nurtured. And if that means reaching out to some other people so and be like, hey, I, I need some nurturing. Could you help me with this? Like, could you do this thing for me, right? Don't be afraid to communicate that if that's what's required of you, right? If that's what if that's what you require of yourself, right? If that's what you require of yourself. Make sure that you are feeling nurtured because you need to feel nurtured so that you can nurture others. And when you come out of this hybridization process and you find that you have melded your sun sign and your Virgo moon and you put them together and you're this new thing, you're going to find that you're going to be able to provide for others and nurture others just by like... <laughs> sprinkling your fairy dust or what actually the image I get is like a tree like you're like a tree that has been rained on and then the tree like shakes itself off like a dog after a bath right and all those little drops of water but they're going to be like magical dew drops <laughs> magical dew drops of like silver and gold they're they're colored both silver and gold and you shake them off and then they sprinkle around and then they feed the earth and they nourish the souls of everyone around them so all you guys really need to do is don't feel bad about betraying your past self. Don't feel bad about going through this personal transformation or this big paradigm shift. Mourn whatever has been lost, but know that the mourning process does not go on forever. And then focus. If you need something to focus on, focus on what you're learning. Focus on your new skill. Focus on literally just putting one step in front of the other because you're going to get to the top of the mountain. You're going to be transformed in, in this process of alchemy and then you're going to be able to nourish the earth <laughs> with your beautiful, beautiful, like your soul is so rich, right? Your soul is so rich and you don't always show that to others. Your soul is so rich and it's going to become even more enriched. You're going to be able to feed, like feed millions of people with this is like the feeling of it, right? You guys are so beautiful and you are here to do deep, deep work for the earth. So thank you so much for your service, guys. I love you. Bye. Hello, my Libra moons. Your guys' vibe is very different. So I recorded the first six moon signs this morning in the daylight and now it is in the evening and the sun has set and it is dark and there has been this big gap of time and now you guys are coming in and the balance of night and day, <laughs> the balance of night and day. And I also just spent the last hour really doing a lot of digging and feeling into some ancestral healing type of stuff but it wasn't for my family it was for somebody else's family kind of a long story that I can't really get into here but oh and I actually saw just noticed that the camera was pretty blurry so <laughs> all of this adds up to something something um as you get in touch with your inner your inner Libra energy, your own inner balance, it is going to be bringing forth or reflecting greater levels of balance in your environment. And I think you will find that like, there's like a purpose to being a Libra moon, like a, a specific purpose. Like you come in with this energy in order to balance something, in order to clear something, in order to bring justice, right? Libra always being that justice, but it's not justice in terms of human level judicial system type of justice. It's not really that, right? It is energetic balance, energetic balance. And there is something interesting about the air sign moons. We've only talked about Gemini so far, but now we've got Libra because the air signs are like mental, intellectual minded energy. And the moon is your inner landscape and your emotions. So it's a little bit of an odd fit. I, I think the air signs when they're vibrating with the moon, it's a little bit interesting because it's like something is a little bit conflated between your mind and your emotions. So let's get the cards and see. Wheel of Fortune. There was one other, I don't remember what pile it was, <laughs> like what sign it was that got also got the wheel out first oh my god do you do you see this do you see how perfect this imagery is uh to go along with what i was just talking about night and day 
oh my god, this is so cool because I, I was very interested in, I recorded this, the first six signs, right? The first six. And when you look at the zodiac wheel, the first six signs, um, Aries to Virgo are on the bottom half. And there is this traditional idea that the bottom half of the zodiac is the, are the lunar signs that they're like the, the like that they are part of the night, right? That they are the inner world. And then the other, the top six are part of the day <laughs> and are more externalized and more masculine even, or more of the light, but only in a kind of, um, daytime, nighttime kind of expression of that. And I was like, oh, it's a little bit backwards, right? You would have thought given that rationale that I would have done the lunar signs during the night and the solar signs during the day, but it was actually reversed, right? I did the lunar signs during the day and the solar signs during the night. And that's actually what we have reflected here. The top half, which we might associate with the day, with the top half of the zodiac, it is coming up as this, this shadow energy, this nighttime energy. And I don't mean anything negative by night or, or shadow or anything. It's literally just day and night, right? Just literally day and night. That that's it. It's, these are archetypal energies I'm talking about. And the bottom, the light is all down here in this bottom half. So do you, do you kind of see what I'm saying? There's this weird inversion of night and day, but it's also, that's what bring, it brings balance. Cause you can see these cats on this wheel are yin and yang, right? Black with white up here, white with black down here. So this is slightly difficult to articulate, but I think you guys catch the vibe. I think you catch the vibe of it almost feels like four things clicking into place for you guys, four things clicking into place. Okay. So this is coming out strong. Um, let me adjust the lighting. Okay. I think that's better. Now, now that the sun is down, it's harder to get <laughs> to get good lighting um, where I'm recording right now. But so you've also got judgment here with the swan and the swan is looking at her own reflection. Um, it's too, too many of those. I'm just going to shuffle them back in. And if they're important, they will come back out. The empress came out upside down justice here you guys are <laughs> here you are the justice card representing libra and i had already said justice in this reading this sword pointing down uh the when i the word i heard when i looked at that was the fulcrum you guys are the tipping point you guys are the tipping point the fulcrum the moment like the, the, the point on which everything balances and I think this has so much to do with like family karma, ancestral karma, ancestral healing, um, because <laughs> the moon represents, of course it represents your emotion, it represents the divine feminine, and it represents the home, but it's also like the sign of family, right? And <laughs> That's what I'm going to run with, with with this, especially with everything I was thinking about before I turned on the camera. So this is more about your entire life, your entire existence. It's like part part of why you were born. Of course, there is so much more to you than 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 just serving your family and just clearing this ancestral karma. But it's like this is one thing. This is one aspect of why you're here. And this specifically has to do with your mother's side of the family. Um, you got the Empress in reverse. So you can feel into what this might mean for you. It doesn't necessarily have to be your mother. It could be your mother's mother or your mother's mother's mother. You know, running back through your maternal side of your family. What is the issue there? What is the deal? Why is this Empress in reverse, right? This Empress in reverse is in the middle. I think for a lot of you, this is grandmother or great grandmother, um, or even tracing back into ancestors that you're not aware of because they're too far back in time and you don't know who they are and you don't know what their issue was, right? Um, you bring balance to this. You bring balance. And
in the microcosm of your own inner landscape, of your own mind and your own emotions and your own inner work, your own processing, your own shadow work, literally everything that goes on in your inner world is reflecting in microcosm something that has been playing out in your family for generations. And in this lifetime, you are able, and it could also be you and your children, if you have children, um, you and your siblings. Uh, it, it's like this has been playing out over many generations and every generation has had an important part to play, like an important part to play in terms of breaking this chain. Like for some of you who know you have some kind of ancestral curse, this is that. For others of you who've just kind of always suspected, like what is with my family? Maybe there are certain diseases or certain bad habits or whatever, um, or just certain problems that tend to run in your family. This is all related to some kind of energy, right? It's an energy that has been absorbed by your family back in... I just got distracted because I think I just heard my cat uh, coughing up a hairball, <laughs> which uh, now I'm gonna have to pause and clean that up. Okay, and now the cat is here, <laughs> hanging out on top of your cards. You wanna show your face on the camera, Mishka? You just, you just wanna show everybody your back, hmm? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that absolutely confirmed it for me. Something, your inner experience of unleashing your Libra moon is <laughs> the microcosmic experience of cleansing and clearing out this family, this family. Wow. And when I said that, I almost felt like my mouth was full of marbles, almost like I lost, like my lips went numb and I almost lost the ability to speak. It was very strange, but it's to clear this all out. It's to clear it. And it's been happening over many generations. So I think it is worth it for you guys to know that your, your inner landscape I think that's the best, that's the word I've been using for you guys the most. It's your inner landscape is highly connected to your family, highly connected to your family, okay? And whether you know it or not, you, even if you, maybe you don't really have much family or maybe you you're, aren't in contact with your family, even if you're in a situation like that, it's your ancestors are still like connected to you, still inside of you, playing out their thoughts and feelings inside your mind. So a large part of bringing forth your Libra moon, bringing forth your lunar self is getting in tune with kind of your inner family, <laughs> understanding how they are still a part of your experience and helping them achieve a new level of balance. And like literally, okay, you've got the Empress upside down. This is your family. This is your maternal line specifically. I mean, for some, this could be, you know, your, your, pater your paternal line. If it's your father's family that has more of an issue, right? You, you will, you will know if, you know, if you're the odd one out on this, but <laughs> literally bringing justice and bringing balance, bringing balance, bringing healing and balancing to this Empress energy that has been inverted almost as if there's some strange, dense, difficult, challenging frequency that has been plaguing your family and seven of discs perseverance and see this this crossing here this crossing thing remember i said there was like four things clicking into balance it's almost like it's you know this diagonal here this diagonal is you with your chakras that's you and then what's this other diagonal there's some there's some other force crossing you and it's but not in a bad way it's like connecting with you to to help you with this balance it's like first you come into balance within yourself and then you come into balance in this external way. Maybe for a lot of you, this is going to be you finding your partner and then you guys having like starting a family together or developing your family together and just your life together and coming into balance and literally by how you live your life that it, it, it's like saying, hey, look, I don't have to be subjected or influenced by this weird ancestral patterning anymore. I can free myself from this. Um, so this is a very different message than any of the other signs I've gotten so far. I want to just get a little bit more just to know, okay, I was going to say, what, what do you need to do to like bring this energy forth, right? So far this has been describing what you kind of are doing, but like, what is the advice? Okay, Prince of Wands, instigation, instigation. <laughs> okay, I know exactly what this is. This is 
sometimes your Libra moon, you are almost um, kind of bending over backwards to create harmony in an environment and sometimes tolerating others too much, giving to others too much, always just kind of giving yourself the short end of the stick just so that everything can stay harmonious in your environment. This is like, it's time to stand up and call people out if they need calling out on. And this is mostly to do with your family, okay? Mostly to do with your family. If you need to stand up for yourself, if you need to say, hey, I need to be more in balance because If you are not an equal partner in your relationship or in your family, then then you're not in balance, right? You need to be exactly as worthy as everyone else. And sometimes you need to say, hey, what about me? Hey, what about my thing, right? And instigate. And this is actually letting you know that sometimes it's okay to really um, kind of like poke the bee's nest. If your family is a bit of a, like a beehive, <laughs> sometimes it's okay to be like, to instigate something. Don't be afraid of conflict. Don't be afraid of, don't be afraid of conflict because if the scales of justice are not balanced, someone's going to have to come along and like move, remove a rock <laughs> from the scale so that they can be balanced. You guys are going to have to look at the scales in your family and go, okay, what, what needs to be removed? What needs to be added? Where does more energy need to be placed? Where does more attention need to be placed? And where does some energy need to be removed? So be okay with being the instigator. Be okay with putting yourself out there, letting your mind be known, speaking your mind, letting yourself be heard. Okay, because you're going to have to be the one to balance the scales and you're going to have to instigate something sometimes in order to do that. And you guys will be very good at knowing you you guys aren't going to overdo it is what I'm saying. You're not going to overdo it because you are very tuned in to family harmony. So you don't need to worry about going too far. It can be a small thing, a small thing, and you can do it respectfully and with love. And that is how this is all going to work out. And you can come into all of these major arcanas you got going on here. This is, this is big stuff. I <laughs> apparently Libra moon it, like incarnated with a purpose and incarnated specifically to do this deep ancestral healing and family level work, like generational work. This is generational work. And just to, just to kind of um, summarize one more time that it'll be beneficial for you. So this is something you can do in order to bring forth your Libra moon, right? To bring this out understand that whatever's happening in your inner landscape that is also happening in your macrocosmic landscape so your inner world reflects kind of what your family has been through for generations so it, it, it's just like the small version and the big version and but they're equally powerful and when you resolve anything and when you work through something in your inner landscape that energetically creates the blueprint for it to be healed on your macrocosmic family landscape so <laughs> Very interesting, very cool. Good luck, Libra Moons. I love you guys. Bye. Okay, here we are for... No, not for Pisces, not yet. <laughs> this is Scorpio, Scorpio, Scorpio. Scorpio Moons. Are you guys anxious about something? I mean, I know Scorpio moon has a tendency to be... Wow, I'm feeling my energy shift so hard coming into your guys' reading. This is intense. I have not felt the shift this intensely. But of course, you know, Scorpio moon is intense. <laughs> Scorpio moon is intense. You guys got some something cooking and it's actually making me feel a little dizzy. Because you guys are in your head spinning and spinning and spinning always digging deeper the thing with scorpio moon is you're always seeking the truth you're always seeking the deeper meaning you're always seeking always puzzling always wanting to know hmm and and you know what i know a lot of scorpio moons and there's one thing all scorpio moons that i know have in common they all go hmm it can't be that simple hmm there has to be more to it than that hmm there must be another explanation and it's like 
Scorpio moon is like the ones that I know anyway are almost never <laughs> satisfied or always looking deeper. And this is your guys' greatest, most wonderful strength. But it, I know from observing so many Scorpio moons <laughs> that it is also the thing that like makes your life challenging, <laughs> right? Um, and I can just feel all this pressure in my chest and all of this anxiety in my heart and I feel dizzy in my head. So let's just see what's going on with Scorpio moon. Six of swords. It's time to change guys. <laughs> it's time to take your inner landscape somewhere new. Okay. This is stop looping. <laughs> stop looping. Six of swords gets on a boat and goes somewhere new. Six of swords does not look back. Okay, Scorpio moon, I know you guys are always looking back. You're always second guessing yourselves. You're always going, I should have done that differently. I should have said that differently. Oh my God, why did I do that? I should have done this. Or what did that person really mean? Did they mean this? Did they mean that? What was their motivation? Like I could just, I could, now I'm in the Scorpio moon headset. I could just keep looping, 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 looping. It's time to transition. It's time to travel somewhere new. It's time to leave the past behind. It is time to move on entirely and <laughs> stop the looping. Stop the looping. Because that's the thing. Scorpio is this, is this transformative energy, right? Transformative energy. But if you're looping, if you're just looping, then you're not actually transforming. You, you might make it when you're looping, you might feel like you're transforming, but you're just going in a circle. It's almost like you get stuck in this eddy, like a whirlpool, and you're going, yeah, I'm moving around, I'm spinning around, I'm spinning around, I'm spinning around, and as long as I'm spinning, I'm moving, and if I'm moving, I must be transforming, but you're not, you're actually going in a circle. So you, you gotta like make this vertical leap. You gotta actually cross the river, right? Don't just keep riding around in a circle on the banks of the river. You gotta cross the river. This is like cross the Rubicon. You guys have to do something and then never look back, never second guess yourself. It is move on big time, big time in your inner landscape. This is, I mean, you could be manifesting this some way in your physical life with an actual move or an actual breakup or an actual career change or a big life change, anything. But this is mostly about how you deal with your thoughts, how you deal with your inner landscape. Strength, okay? Whatever you're going into, whatever you're walking into, you might feel like you're walking into the lion's den. But remember, <laughs> you can walk into the lion's den with your inner strength. You've got, you've got the strength. You've got it, okay? And you will not be eaten by the lions. Walk into the lion's den and know you will not be eaten. So has fear been holding you back? Has second-guessing yourself been holding you back? I can I can hear myself. I just sort of like kind of clued into how I've been talking and I can tell that for you guys, this is like when I am supposed to channel one of those kind of tough love readings, which, uh, you know, I hope I don't trigger anybody or I hope no one takes this too personally, but <laughs> that's kind of the message coming for, through for you guys. It's like, it's time to own your mess is what I just heard. Own your own inner mess own your mess, own, like, you've been looping, looping, looping. Imagine a dog that's been running around in the grass for so long that he's churned the grass up into mud, right? But the dog has just kind of gotten to this habit. He doesn't even really know he's looping and he doesn't know that he, like, you need to break. So something needs to happen to break the habit. You need to break the habit of your mental looping. A five of cups and you're not going to like it. <laughs> um... So I've probably, uh, a tri I've probably upset a few people and, um, please forgive me. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't mean to upset you. Um, three of swords. Oh my God. Okay. Seven of swords. Okay. Shit's getting real guys. This is all in pursuit of your own inner strength. Okay. This is to find your inner strength. You've got a five of swords or five of cups. Sorry, this is disappointment, but <laughs> look at this person. They're kind of like drinking and laughing in despair. Like, have you ever been so just like throw your hands up in the air? This is kind of like a fuck it moment. Like when life is just, <laughs> life has gotten so ridiculous. You just throw your hands up in the air and you just say to hell with all of it. 
fuck it. And you just grab the bottle of wine and you're kind of laughing and crying at the same time at the ridiculousness of it all. Okay. <laughs> and to move through this heart healing. Okay. So there is a higher level of heart healing for you guys to experience. <sighs> You have been looping. It's because like, why has the looping been happening, right? You've been looping because you've been stuck under a ceiling. And the ceiling is some kind of dense frequency, some kind of block to your heart, right? And it's really something because Scorpio feels so deeply, so passionately. Scorpio feels and loves with the utmost of its being, especially a Scorpio moon, right? You guys are like full on, just passionate, emotional people. And, but there's been like a lid on that, or like a cork. It's like a cork is in your heart. And whatever is going on with you guys around the time you see this, it's to clear that out. It's to clear that out. And the fact that you guys have been looping so long, it's like you've been building up this frenetic energy, like a spring that has been coiled really, really tight. Like really, really tight. Like you've been coiled so tight because you've been looping and looping and looping and coiling yourself tighter and tighter and tighter. And it's like time for the, the cork to pop, right? This, the cork's gotta pop. And you might get to this place <laughs> like when you get to that to hell with it moment where you're just like, fuck it, y you might um, surprise yourself with how you act. And guys, it's okay. I know you guys aren't going to do anything to really harm someone else, right? I know that. Like, <laughs> so you don't need to worry about that. I know you guys aren't going to do that, but you might find yourself like exploding on someone, right? Just like yelling at them or just really chewing them out, really giving them a piece of your mind, that kind of thing. And know that that's okay. Okay. It's okay to lose your cool. Sometimes it's okay to yell at someone, right? Obviously don't, you know, I'm not saying go around and yell at people all the time, but it is okay. If you lose your cool, right? It is okay if you lose your cool. Like if you're having a genuine emotional experience and you just can't keep it in anymore and you kind of lose it and you kind of choose someone out, well, that's okay. Okay. Especially because I think you guys are really bottled up. You're like so bottled up. It, it's all of this energy is bottled up inside of you and it needs to come out. So if, if you can't release it in a more stabilized kind of um, smoother type of way, it will explode on some level. And I think you guys have possibly been in your, in your life, been like a volcano, right? Building it up, building it up, building it up and then exploding. Maybe you only explode once a decade. Maybe you explode once a year. I don't know what your explosion schedule is, right? What your eruption schedule is, but you've got one. <laughs> and if you have never exploded, that means that the explosion is going to be even more intense. So like, just give yourself permission right now to let it all out because I know you guys aren't going to do anything really bad when you explode, right? It's okay. It's okay if you yell at your partner. <laughs> like if you guys are in a fight and you start yelling, I know you're not going to hit them or throw things at them, right? If you're just yelling at them because you're just so emotional and so frustrated, I mean, that's okay, right? It's okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Queen of Cups, Queen of Cups, it's okay, it is okay, you need to be able to express yourself, right? And so I think once the cork bursts, and if you have this explosion, whatever it is, and for some of you, it's, I, you know, I'm using this example of, you know, yelling at somebody. Because <laughs> um, I feel like Scorpio Moon is has so much passion, so much intensity that it doesn't typically know how to express itself in the world, and it ends up repressing itself, right? It ends up being repressed and then it comes out in these explosions. So after the cork bursts, after the dam breaks, right? Once the, <laughs> once everything comes gushing out of you, maybe you just have a breakdown and you have to explain a whole bunch of things to somebody, right? That's gonna help you <laughs> like show the world who you are, right? Maybe this, maybe the person, right? Maybe your person or whatever this is had no idea that's how you felt. Maybe they have no idea. They have no idea because your emotional depth, <laughs> your emotional sensitivity, your emotional depth and the breadth of your emotions and the like intensity of your passion, like nobody else is like that. <laughs> nobody else is like that. Not to the degree that you are, right? You're Scorpio moon. That is like the most intensely passionate and 
emotional person that there is, in my opinion. <laughs> so once the dam breaks, then you're going to be coming into this place. See, it all leads up to the Queen of Cups, where you come into this leveling up, this emotional maturity, right? That's where this is all going. So if you have these eruptions and everything kind of goes all cattywampus, it's okay because this is you learning to emotionally mature, right? You are emotionally maturing. And then you're going to be this beautiful, queenly empath, this beautiful, empowered person who knows how to use their emotions as a tool. You will understand the purpose of emotions you will understand that your emotions just feed you information about the world that your emotions are meant to be used as part of your intuitive toolkit and that your emotions are not here to torture you and that you don't need to stamp down like tamp down and restrict your emotions to let them flow freely and then and then if you come into this place where you can continuously express your emotions, right? Con continuously, like every day expressing yourself. In my opinion, Scorpio moon needs to have a way to express itself every day, like every day. Cause this, you have a constant inner generator of this passion, this emotional intensity, and it needs to express itself daily, daily. So of course you might exhaust your friends or family by always having to express yourself. So, you know, you can find some other outlet. It doesn't need to be verbally. It can you can write it down, right? But again, it doesn't need to be verbally. It could be even through through a sport, right? Doing some kind of exercise or activity where you express your feelings through your body, right? That can be so beneficial. Doing any kind of art, even cooking, <laughs> um, anything that makes you feel like you are expressing yourself and channeling your energy out into the world, um, and that is going to break you out of this loop. The, your your emotions need to be channeled. They need to be used because. Otherwise, it's just going to stew and stew and stew. And we're done with that. We're done with the stewing. We're done with the looping. We're done, done, done. You guys, it is time to emotionally mature and come into this beautiful Queen of Cups. The fully self-actualized psychic or empath or intuitive, whatever that is for you, right? Fully owning your emotions. I think what did I what did I blurt out earlier? I said like you own your mess. Your 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 mess is your kind of emotional looping, right? And it's okay because you know, when I was a teenager, my well, I mean my emotions were a total mess and I'm not even a Scorpio moon. <laughs> but um my room, my room was a disgusting mess. I was a total slob. I like my door couldn't fully open for about 5 years and I had like 2 feet of just like clothes and old books and just random junk on my floor. And when I walked, I crunched through everything, right? And if I needed to find a dollar to go buy a pop, I would just kind of root around on the floor and like grab a bunch of nickels and I'd ha find a dollar and it was like ridiculous, right? Eventually I had to own my mess. Eventually I had to clean my room <laughs> and then become a more mature adult who would, you know, continuously clean my room, you know, maybe not every day, but most days I'll do a little bit of tidying every day so that things don't get out of hand. So this is you guys to fully bring your Scorpio moon forward. You've, you've, you've stamped it down. You've pushed your Scorpio moon down basically because you weren't attending to it properly. And that's okay. You didn't, you didn't know. It, it's really powerful to have a Scorpio moon. It is so intense. It is a lot to have corked up inside of you. Okay. So it's like, it's okay. <laughs> it's completely okay that you didn't know how to handle that when you were younger, right? Or just whenever this was before now, it's totally okay because it is so much like, oh my God, I don't think I could be a Scorpio moon. I think I would lose my mind. <laughs> um, because you're you're like literally channeling more emotional energy than everybody else. It's just just that you are. You're literally channeling more emotional energy than everybody else. So it's okay if you dealt with it by by stamping it all down. That's fine. That's totally fine. And now you're learning. It's like instead of just stamping it all down and then dealing with your emotions once a year when you explode, you need to develop constant emotional awareness where you tend to your emotions daily, where you weed your emotional garden daily. This is like your emotions need to be a daily practice of checking in on your emotions. How are they doing? What emotions need to be discarded? What, em what emotions need to be flushed right down the toilet? What ones need to be tended to? What, what emotions can you grow? Because think about this, guys. 
Think about this. You have maybe been plagued by your emotions up until now, but when your Scorpio moon rises and fully expresses itself in its fully mature, healthy, balanced way, then imagine, it's like what I'm seeing in my mind is just, it's like the Garden of Eden almost. That is what you can grow with your beautiful Scorpio emotional moon. You can grow this beautiful garden, this beautiful landscape that is just absolutely lush, like bursting with life, absolutely bursting with life. Just imagine imagine a landscape you know maybe it's tropical maybe it's a garden maybe it's a forest whatever it is just bursting with life plants fruit vegetables beautiful animals birds singing just your perfect most luscious most i don't even it's like a paradise okay it's a paradise that is what you can grow with your emotions okay that is what you can grow you are here to <laughs> water the earth with your emotions and grow this garden. But first, um, it, it's to just tend to your emotional garden, stop the looping, and then daily tend to your practice, to like develop an emotional practice that you tend to daily. This could be journaling. This could be doing a voice, voice memo. This could be meditating. This could just be, I just saw somebody like using a toothbrush on their brain. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. If you could somehow go into your mind and literally like pick out the ticks and the fleas from your mind, so because you're gonna have so many thoughts and so many, um, so many things in your inner landscape that simply don't need to be there, right? When you look, at, imagine that your inner landscape is a walled garden. What do you want in your garden? You don't want the ticks and the fleas. And maybe you don't want cabbage in your garden either. And of course, there's nothing wrong with cabbage or ticks or fleas, right? Those things are perfectly beautiful. You don't need to judge them, but you can say that you don't want them in your garden, right? This is your garden. Only the plants in your, grow in your garden that you put there. So if you don't really want cabbages in your garden or you don't want fleas in your garden, you just move them from your garden. You go, okay, I'm going to put you over there outside of my garden. And that's what you do with your emotions and your inner landscape. Anything that's in there that you don't want there, you just say, okay, you're perfect and beautiful and I'm not judging you. And But you can just go somewhere else because you don't need to be in my head. You can just go elsewhere. So <laughs> that's, that's what this is about. Tend your emotional garden. <laughs> and then you guys are going to be enormously powerful agents of change because you will water this garden of paradise right here beginning in your own mind so thank you to everybody who stuck through the end of this i hope i didn't um bother anybody too much and i think you see how this leads up to you guys having the most profound transformation of your inner landscape all by allowing your emotions to come forth and to bloom so i love you guys sending you so much love and light bye Okay, here we are with Sagittarius Moon. These, the more readings I do, the more interesting this is getting because I'm starting to feel the shifts between the signs more and more. Okay, you guys, got, you guys got the Fool and Judgment flopped right out. I'm gonna shuffle those back in. We'll make note of that, and if they come out again, then we'll really know. Um. Before the fool and judgment popped out, I was thinking that you guys are here to, there's something about escaping. There's a theme of escape. I'm not going to say if you're supposed to be escaping or if you're supposed to stop escaping, <laughs> what you're escaping. I don't know, but there's a theme of escape with Scorpio, with, um, not Scorpio. That was the last reading with Sagittarius moon, Sagittarius moon. And that going from fool to judgment is kind of like a absolutely bizarre, radical, extreme leveling up, like zero to hero overnight. 
let's see what cards come through. Three of Wands. Conqueror of Wands. Okay, so lots of fire energy coming up, which is cool because you guys are a fire moon sign. Three of Swords. Seeker of Coins. Wheel of Fortune. That Wheel of Fortune is like the fool to judgment. Something a vortex. There is a very interesting vibe here. I'm going to be like silent for a minute while I try to feel this out. It's something about a vortex. It feels like when you close your eyes, it's almost difficult for you to be in your body. I feel a pressure on the top of my head, a pressure on my third eye, as if my consciousness is trying to like get, it's like something is trying, my consciousness feels like it's trying to escape my body. Have you guys often been out of your bodies, often tried to escape your body, often tried to escape your home, often tried to escape your life? Thinking that somewhere out there the solution will be found, that the grass is always greener on the other side, that somewhere out there it'll be better, that the thing you need is always out there. This feels like like you have been escaping yourself. And in order to bring your consciousness back to your body, that's actually the goal here because you're not gonna be able to express your Sagittarius moon if you're not in your body. So this is actually about coming back into your body. So this Three of Swords is about, the Three of Swords is some kind of heartache. I know these holographic cards are kind of hard to see. Here you have a bird, Three Swords. Has something happened that has made you feel like Life has clipped your wings like you can't fly. All you want to do is fly away and escape. But you have to be here. You have to be here because it is important for you to be in your body. Because it is important to find the thing inside of yourself. Whatever you've been looking for. Whatever you've been trying to escape so that you can find. It's actually inside of you. I feel, yeah, this Three of Swords is almost a course correction on... The Three of Wands, looking out to the horizon, always looking at what's coming ahead, always looking for the future, always looking to receive from others. Conqueror of Wands, always running out, <laughs> always running out of the house, always running out ahead, always trying to spend time away from yourself, even spending time away from your family. Um, some people that's like traveling a lot, so you never have to be at home working lots, so you never have to be at home, just being, keeping yourself really busy, doing lots of activities, so you never have to be at home. And for some of you that is home, and some of you when I say home, it's like yourself, always taking yourself out of yourself. So you guys really are going on this process of getting reacquainted with yourself because it, you can't even bring forth your Sagittarius moon unless you know what your Sagittarius self is. What is your lunar self? Why have you been trying to escape yourself? What do you need to look at? There's something very physical, very physical, like um, like in your body. There's something in your body, in your mind, in your consciousness for you to look at. You are seeking it. You are seeking it. There's a tooth, a key, and a coin.
there's a door inside of you that you have had locked up. And the door needs to be opened. And as you can hear, my voice was like almost starting to crack because um, this is kind of emotional. What have you locked away deep down inside? Why did you lock it away? The wheel cannot turn. You cannot move forward. You cannot move on. The next phase of your life will not never truly begin. Your next, next level of consciousness will never truly be attained until you unlock that door. You need to unlock the door inside of yourself, but you already have the key. It's like the key is hanging around your neck, but you forgot it was there. Maybe it's invisible and so you stop looking at it, but you can still feel it. The key is there and you just need to take the key, put it inside your heart and open the door. Some of you, the key is already inside the lock and you just need to turn it. The fool. <laughs> okay, there we go. Yeah, there's the fool again, right? You guys are going to succeed at this. I think this, this reading is going to be the most vague <laughs> out of any that I've done because it's like, what? It, I'm basically like asking you Socratic questions, right? What have you locked away inside of you? Why did you lock it away? Why haven't you turned the key? Where is the key? Just put it in the lock and turn the key and open the door and find out what's inside. Because it's like that energy of the sage, of the scholar, right? That Sagittarius energy. You don't need anybody to tell this. You are your own sage, right? You are your own sage. Maybe what you've locked inside of you is your own inner wisdom. Maybe you've been seeking wisdom from others. And it's time to remember that you are the wisdom that you seek. <laughs> you are the wisdom that you seek. It's not even that you have the wisdom. It's that you are the wisdom you are the wisdom. It is all inside of you. You never t need to receive any, any wisdom outside of yourself. It all comes from inside of you. Just saw four for four on the camera. You know what? I'm not going to draw any more cards because this full card, we already got the card that goes with that, right? It was full and then judgment. So when you unlock this door inside of yourself and when you see what you've hidden deep inside, when you see who you really are on the inside, it's just going to come flooding out of you. It's like everybody else, <laughs> all the other readings, they've had this process to kind of go through of like, uh, like working on bringing their lunar energy forward. You guys literally just need to open the gate. You just need to open the door. Just unlock the door, open the door, and then phew, you're just going to whoosh, like a fire turning on, right? Like, you know, when you turn a gas fireplace on, or if you throw a match on a bunch of logs that have gas poured on them, it's just whoosh, right? Whoosh. That's what's going to happen with you guys when you, when you, when you unlock your inner consciousness, it's just going to come flooding, rushing out of you like a flame. And there's nothing else you need to do. You literally just need to open the door and then you're going to, it's going to be transcendent all the way up. You, you, this is a massive opportunity for like exponential development in, in whatever, in any area of your life in your human life or your spiritual journey, this is like exponential because the flame is on, the flame turns on, right? When you unlock the door, you're going to find that there's this beautiful glowing furnace inside and then it's going to light up the whole world, right? It, it, that's your portal. That's your, also the portal inside of yourself, this thing behind the locked door, there's a portal there and the portal goes all the way to source, right? And here's the thing. You guys are kind of like the ultimate adventurers, right? Always seeking, always moving, always traveling, always learning. Um, but you've been seeking, it's like the thing that you're really seeking is the portal back to source, the portal back to source, but the portal's inside of you. It's inside your heart. But why did you never look there? Why did you never look inside of yourself? You only looked outside of yourself. You've been seeking everywhere except the one place that you should be looking, which is your very core, your very center, the portal inside your own heart. You want to take the ultimate journey. You want to portal your way all the way back to source. The portal to source is in your own heart. And all you need to do is unlock it. You already have the key. You already know where the door is. You already can find the lock. It's just a matter of just saying yes. Just, just say yes. <laughs> you can say yes out loud right now. Say yes, I'm ready to unlock my heart. That's it. Wow. So uh, at least a few of you did that with me because I've massively just felt 
my reality shift, it was like this whoop, whoop, um, mostly on the left side of my body. And, um, yeah, I, I can feel the energy has shifted a lot. <laughs> so some of you, um, it, it and basically, none of you failed to do that. If you tried to do that, if you intended, if you if you just walked through that with me, then you did it. It succeeded. There's there's no like trying to do it and messing it up, right? As long as you intended to unlock the portal to your heart and as long as you actually said that you're doing it, then you did it. Right? The, the only way to mess it up is to like I mean, I honestly, I don't even think I want to describe how to mess it up because that would just bring the, the resonance here down, right? There is, <laughs> all you have to do is just intend to do it. And if you haven't done it yet, you can just do it now or you can go back and do it again with me. It's really that simple. You can do it when you're going to bed tonight too. Just say, I am ready to open up the portal to my heart and everything's just going to exponentially shift after that. And your your inner sage, your inner sage will come will come roaring to life and will come roaring out and then your portal to source will be open and then it's a whole new beginning. It's a whole new beginning. There's your fool, right? There's your fool's journey, your hero's journey. And that that's it. I got, I got thank you for doing that work with me, guys. Uh, and that's is that is literally as easy as energy work has to be. It doesn't need to be this big long convoluted thing. You don't need to pay somebody to do energy work for you. You don't even need to know what energy work is. It's just about deciding what you're doing with your life. It's just deciding what you're doing with yourself. It is just choosing. That's all energy work is. It's just making a choice. So you you are your own energy healer. You are your own high priestess. You are your own sage. You don't need to know anything <laughs> to do it. You just, you just do it. You just make choices. That's it. You just intend and then so it is. And so it is, guys. And now your life is drastically changed for the massive, massive better. Um, and that, that's it. <laughs> I love you guys. Bye. Okay, Capricorn Moon. We're almost <sighs> almost what? <laughs> what am I saying? Um these readings are getting more intense as we go along. So now we've made it all the way to Capricorn. Very interesting Capricorn Moon, right? Very interesting because Capricorn energy is probably the least lunar energy that there is because it's the opposite right the moon is the moon is cancerian energy it is the bottom of the zodiac and capricorn is the opposite of that it's at the top of the zodiac uh you know ruled by saturn it's very interesting um but i am fairly familiar with capricorn moons because my husband has a capricorn moon so i kind of see how this plays out your moon energy likes to manifest likes to manifest in the physical. So I actually feel that out of all the, all of the signs, you guys probably are the most acquainted with your moon energy, whether you know it or not. Maybe you've never thought about it before, but it's like your moon energy is already present. It is already making itself known. It is already something you show to the world and you do it through your manifestations, right? Through your manifestations. But there can be a stress there can be a stress about having Capricorn moon because it can make you feel like you're fighting the devil. Sometimes <laughs> this energy of having to, like there's, a, there's an energy of struggle to it. Um, and for those of you who've had like really challenging pasts in this particular lifetime, it can make you feel like you've had to like resist a lot or that you've had to be like working uphill a lot, that things have been frustrating or that you've been thwarted. So. The Capricorn moon is so beautiful because it is this manifest, manifestative, <laughs> that's not a word, but it is this energy that wants to manifest. It's like it wants to go to ground, right? This energy wants to go to ground so it can manifest, but it also just has this frustrating kind of challenge to it because it's a, Capricorn energy is extremely dense and um, just because it's so, it's so complex, right? It's so complex. And it holds the energy of all of the previous signs, like all the signs do, right? We start with Aries and we build upwards, right? 
but by the time you get to Capricorn, now you're holding 10 whole energies and the and the only thing that comes after Capricorn is Pisces and Aquarius, like, like Aquarius and Pisces. And those energies uh, are collective energies. So they've basically reached critical mass and they have like fragmented out into a snowflake type of energy like Aquarius I always see as a snowflake and Pisces I see as an ocean but with Capricorn you're basically the only sign that can hold all of the all of these zodiac energies within your own self and so you guys are holding all of this energy inside of your own inner landscape so you are like very large okay <laughs> um very large your inner landscape is very large and it is very full and it is very complex and it is very like sophisticated and mature there's tons going on in there tons and you might actually be surprised to find how that like other people don't have as much um complexification <laughs> <laughs> like complexity but you know complexification almost feels like a better word for it uh as you do because you're so used to this and you're, you're able to carry all of this energy and i don't know it, it's just i think important for you to know that i feel like for you guys it's less about getting to like bringing your capricorn capricorn <laughs> Capricorn moon it's less about bringing it forth and more about tempering it or just learning what to do with it or how to deal with it eight of water I'm really drawn to all of these chakra points the vertical alignment and the hands the hands this is your guys's manifestation and it's this water energy though, your manifestations, the manifestations in your life that will be the most successful are the ones that begin with a passion and with a feeling. And then you manifest them through your hands, either by building something, constructing something, doing art, doing healing, doing cooking, doing service to others. Something that you do is how you channel all of this energy. The hero. <laughs> Just letting you take a look at this. This hero, sometimes we associate the hero with the fool in the tarot, but in this deck, as you can see, it's actually card number 12, and this uh, deck is very non-traditional, so you don't need to associate that with any other major arcana. This is just you. This is you, okay? <laughs> you are the hero. <laughs> you are the hero, and I feel that some of you need to hear that, and some of you might argue with that, because some of you feel like, some of you have feelings of guilt, feelings of never being good enough, feelings of it doesn't matter how hard you work, it is never enough. Some of you have guilt for things that you really don't need to be guilty for. Okay, the crone. <laughs> and um, Seven of air. And self look at that these dragon wings her high heart lit up i honestly feel like <laughs> you guys are already there okay you guys are already there you're in a very different position than everybody else because your inner world, your lunar energy is already asserting itself because Capricorn energy can't really exist in the shadows. It can't really not assert itself. It would have to have some kind of extremely compromising um, position like with other planets aspecting it or something. I, I can't even imagine what it is, but I guess there is some way to, for Capricorn energy to be compromised. But damn, I don't know what it is, okay? So your your moon, since it is Capricorn energy, which is so interesting, right? It, it's this weird opposite. 
with this weird opposite thing, but your lunar energy is already asserting itself. So it's less of a question for you. Everybody else has to figure out how to, how to bring forward their lunar energy. Your guys, it's like, it's already there. It's already asserting itself. It's already come forward. And now it's, what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? You guys are ahead of the game. Okay. Way ahead of the game. This is like, you guys can now step up into this position of manifestation and leadership. I say, I use those two because for some of you, I feel like you are here to build something. This is like, you could have the number 22 could mean something to you. You could be a 22, um, life path number or something. Maybe you just see 22s everywhere, <laughs> but it's like master builder. You're to, here to build something like you, you were here to have like, like a small business where you build something with your hands or where you do healing work with somebody, or you build a company, build a corporation, build a business, build a band, build a commune. Like it could be literally anything because, and depending on where your moon is placed, what house it's in, that's going to kind of give you some indication of what the theme is. Right. But this is just you're here to build something or you're here to just simply be a leader. You're here to just walk out into the world and be like, this is me. This is who I am. I am inspirational because I exist. Now I'm going to go do this. And anybody who wants to follow me can follow me and people will follow you. People will want to follow you. People are magnetized to you because someone walking around with a Capricorn moon, nobody knows that you, like, I mean, maybe some people who are really into astrology, they might be able to spot you because you're a Capricorn moon, but everybody else, they don't know, but they know, <laughs> they don't know, but they know, right? They can feel it. You're like this giant magnet because you're so dense. And by dense, I don't mean, you know, when we say dense, typically we mean something negative, right? I don't mean that at all. I mean, dense as in like the way a planet is dense, like you have so much gravity, you have like gravitas, if we want to get Latin about it, right? You have so much gravitas, you pull people into your orbit. Um, and it's amazing that you can do this in your in your human form. And, you know, you've got the crone here, this is pretty similar to the high priestess, right? So for those of you who resonate more feminine, and who feel like this is a more of a spiritual thing for you, this is here you are. You were stepping into your spiritual power. This position of spiritual leadership. There she is. So beautiful. So empowered. So connected. So connected to the cosmos. I mean, and for others of you who resonate more masculine, you're the hero. <laughs> you're the hero that everyone's been waiting for. In whatever area of your life that you do things, you are the hero that everyone has been waiting for. The seven of air. Look at this. <laughs> On the one hand, this is almost like a like a, a being come down to bless you, right? To give you blessings. But I feel like <laughs> this is this hand here that's reaching out in blessing is that's like it's your hand. When you reach out to the world to bless the world or to just interact with the world, whatever it is that you do in the world, you're reaching out in blessing and you don't even know it. You don't even know it. It's like you go around stitching the earth back together with your gravity and you do all of this just because you're you just because you are yourself i feel like you guys don't even need this reading i'm surprised anybody watched it you guys don't need my advice <laughs> right you don't you don't need my advice you're you you're you and you got this you don't need anyone's advice you don't need anybody's tarot readings you don't need anybody's thoughts or ideas L look at these cards <laughs> it's like you're so solid you're so good I don't even know what to say okay so I do know what to say now as soon as I said that it came to mind it's that the only thing holding you back is yourself okay what kind of negative thoughts do you have about yourself because <laughs> I guarantee you that they're not founded and some of you you have feelings of guilt some of you you have feelings of shame you could have feelings of I didn't do enough, but this could be somebody who's already accomplished a lot in their life or who's already done so much good in the world or who already holds such a high vibration that simply by breathing, they're healing the world and you're sitting around going like, I'm not good enough, right? This is that, that the, one of the negative manifestations of Capricorn energy is this feeling of never being good enough because you hold yourself to such ridiculously high standards, right? Holding yourself to such ridiculously high standards and then never feeling good about yourself. So take a moment to like write down <laughs> or just say it out loud the things that you are proud of that you've accomplished. And this is not the time to be humble. Okay. And this is not the time to like play down your achievements. It's like, no, say things that are good about yourself. Say things that are good about yourself. Like say 10 things, say 12 things, say 24 things that are, that are beautiful about you, that are amazing about you. I guarantee you that those things that you think are so bad, 
maybe you did that thing and you feel bad about it or maybe you did that thing and it's like you just wish you wouldn't have done it now it's like it's or maybe you think you have some bad habit right maybe you're a smoker and you feel guilty about being a smoker and you, you don't like it but it's like none of these things I promise you they're not as big of a deal as you think they are nobody else is judging you of them if anybody else had these thoughts they would think they were nothing it's like you are holding yourself back with your own low thoughts of yourself and they're completely unjustified and <laughs> that that's it so that's the only thing for you guys to do is to drop out of those feelings of low self-worth because a Capricorn moon has like no fucking reason to have feelings of low self-worth like none okay <laughs> none at all <laughs> like what can I say just just look at these cards right the hero the crone and the self so all you guys need to do is remind yourselves that you are worthy and remember that you are here to be leaders and builders and manifestors and that you can manifest whatever you want whatever you want because when you have a thought or a feeling like when you receive divine inspiration when you channel energy it just goes like straight into the ground <laughs> it goes straight into the earth you guys are so powerful you directly channel high frequency energy directly into the earth grids directly into the ley lines like you you change the crystalline grid of the earth by walking on it and by breathing on it and by existing on it and then occasionally by manifesting something on it right you you, you change the whole grid what they're showing me is like when you do something it ripples out across the entire planet and everybody feels that frequency so it doesn't matter maybe the achievement that you had maybe you think it's silly it's like maybe you won a local poetry reading competition and you think that was silly and that that's not that's not something you should be proud of but you should be absolutely proud of that because that was an achievement that was something that you did right you did that with passion and high frequency and that ripples out through the collective because when you guys manifest it has an impact because of the power of your capricorn energy in in your moon sign right so guys just just be you and be less hard on yourselves <laughs> that's that's my only advice for you guys um sending you so much love and light bye okay aquarius moon you guys are getting the psychedelic space tarot because Aquarius moon. You guys are so much weirder than you want anybody, but anybody to know. <laughs> You're also more intellectual than you want anybody to know. This so this depends on your sun sign, right? If your sun sign is very serious, then you're probably a lot weirder than you want like your colleagues to know. Right? If you're Capricorn, Capricorn Sun, Aquarius Moon, you may be like like you know, like a mullet. <laughs> like business in the front, party in the back, right? Like work hard all week and then party hard on Friday night. Or but it, the party might not even be a party because you're Aquarius Moon. You, it might be like, you know, hanging out with your coven or playing D and D <laughs> or spending the whole weekend at the library doing research for your master's degree that you haven't even told anybody you're doing because maybe you're doing it in something silly like a master's in history, right? And that's not going to get you a job. <laughs> for others of you, well, I know I think that pretty much covered it, right? You're either um, way weirder than people want you to know, or you're way more serious and intellectual than than people think, depending on your sun, your, depending on your sun sign. Okay, so right off the bat, Three of Swords. Man, the Three of Swords has been coming out for so many. Okay, so Aquarius is about to get its ass kicked in terms of astrological transits. When I'm, at the time I'm recording this in January of 2022, Saturn is transiting through Aquarius, okay? Which means Saturn is kicking your butt, calling you to task. He's cracking the whip. He's making you take accountability for your thoughts. What did I just what just happened was I show I had I was looking out the window while I was shuffling was I shuffling it like this <laughs> okay so just for the record I was actually looking out the window I didn't even realize that I was holding this that upside down so this is still your card <laughs> three 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 of swords three of pentacles <sighs> if you happen to be watching this a few years after I post it and Pluto 
is in Aquarius, then welcome to Pluto transiting your moon. <laughs> and for anybody watching this now, just be aware that Pluto is going to transit your moon at some time in this life. And you can start to feel the effects of the Pluto transit before Pluto even gets into Aquarius. So if your moon happens to be at like one degree Aquarius, three degrees Aquarius, something early like that, you might already be feeling the effects of the Pluto transit because Pluto moves so slowly and is such a big circle of impact. So this is a transformation to your inner landscape. And it doesn't feel good to be in with, right? Um... Since we're talking about Saturn and Pluto here, and we're talking about these intense transits that you guys are going through, there are going to be things that will be removed from your life, right? Um, you know, normal everyday kinds of losses, right? Breakups, like changing your career, losing your job, having to move because of some weird thing happened with your house like lacking stability, that these things all happen, but they're happening to realign you with your path. They're, they're happening to realign you with your soul family, right? Whatever you've lost, it's because that was the old version of your life. It's time to enter the new version of your life. And the new version of your life is going to allow you to fly your freak flag right? It's like if you are, if you are a closet star seed, right? If you're in the star seed closet, the new version of your life is going to allow you and invite you to come out of the star seed closet in select environments. It doesn't mean you need to tell everybody, right? But some people, for others of you, you know, maybe your friends, none of them went to school and maybe they kind of would look down at you actually for going back to school, right? Maybe you're, you think you're too old to go back to school, but you're going to do it anyway. It's going to like align you with that. So you can allow your intellectual interests to guide your life path. Yeah. All of this is happening in order to refill your cup, right? This is the Ace of Cups. This is the Holy Grail that your new life path is going to be full of love and light you just might be maybe you don't see it right now right maybe you can't see it right now but you're being aligned with your new path that will allow you to be so much more authentic because how damaging is it for Aquarius to be inauthentic to be forced to be inauthentic it's like more damn I mean of course that's damaging and difficult for everybody but Aquarius energy is like the the energy of idiosyncrasy, right? Aquarians are so idiosyncratic. They're so unusual. They're so like fantastically weird. Um, and if it's like your old life, since this is your moon energy, you weren't really tuned into that. Um, your weirdness, your idiosyncrasies, your iconoclasm, even whatever is unique and special and weird about you was kind of stuffed down and locked away and everything just whatever. I feel like Okay, so all of the other readings were more about like what the person can do to bring forth their their moon energy. For you guys, I feel like this is kind of happening to you. <laughs> and you know why that is? It's because Aquarius energy actually doesn't like to change. Even though Aquarius energy is so open and kind of fruity and strange and weird and fantastic and so eclectic, Aquarius energy is actually like really fixed because it is fixed air energy right it's one of the fixed signs and that means it doesn't change easily and that it actually is stays stagnant and stagnant and stagnant and stagnant and stagnant for so long and then when it finally changes it usually takes some kind of breakdown or some kind of like crack right to break things in order for it to change the fixed signs do not like to change so that's why this is happening to you. And that's why Saturn and Pluto are doing these transits to you guys. So that, and I mean, to be clear, I can't remember when Pluto moves into Aquarius. I think it's like 2024, 2025, something like that. I, I can't remember. So if you're watching this one, I, or like, you know, in 2022 or 2023, Pluto has not yet entered Aquarius, but it's, this is like a long-term thing. And Pluto is going to be transiting your moon at some point you know, in this life, like in the near future, right? In the next few years. Um, yeah, 
So that's why this is happening to you. That's why it feels like it's happening to you because you actually need this external stimulus to kind of crack open the to like dig a hole, to, to make a crack in the surface, to, to crack open this fixed energy so that your inner light can shine forth. Justice. This is all to bring you into balance. This is all to bring forth your lunar energy, to bring forth your inner weirdness so that you can be wonderfully weird in every moment of your life, in every moment of your day, so that you can be who you really are, right? So that you can walk down the street in like a purple zoot suit if that's what you want to do <laughs> right you need to feel that you're you're being aligned to a new life where you will be able to do whatever it is that you want to do so that you can be where you can be as weird as you want to be <laughs> the world okay and this is so huge okay you guys are paving the way anybody who has aquarius energy i feel is particularly special in this life's journey Okay, and I say that because I, I don't have any Aquarius in my chart at all. I have none. So that's why I, I am so impressed by and fascinated by Aquarius energy because you guys like are holding the light codes for the age of Aquarius. You know, if you like to think of the shift in consciousness in terms of the age of Aquarius, I mean, here you guys are, you're holding, you have been ahead of your time since the day you were born, since before you were born. And there are certain things that Aquarians are having to do. This is like Aquarian suns, but especially right now, the Aquarian moons. You need to bring forth your inner Aquarian energy. It's like the age of Aquarius is coming out of you. It's like it's being birthed inside of you and you need to like harness it and grab it and bring it forth. And events in the world, events in your life and these astrological transits are pulling it out of you. Like almost forcing you to embody the age of Aquarius before the age of Aquarius is fully grounded and rooted into the earth reality. So you're doing massive, massive levels of cosmic work on this one, guys. Like you are with your own inner landscape experiences. You are figuring out how to bring forth the age of Aquarius. Like you're, you're you know, the age of Aquarius is happening on a macro level on the planet and really in our whole solar system. And <laughs> But you guys are anchoring it in first with your own inner experiences. So whatever goes on in your mind, whatever goes on in your emotions, whatever goes on inside of you, the whole shifts that are happening literally for your entire life, since before you were born, all the way up until your last breath in this body, it's all this process of calculating how is the age of Aquarius going to be anchored on the earth plane. And you guys are doing it. You're, you're doing like fantastic work, guys. <laughs> fantastic work. And look at this, the bottom of the deck is the Two of Cups, where you guys will be coming into balance. You will, you will. Here's, here's a human in a spacesuit sharing cups, right? Like cheers, toasting cups with this alien. <laughs> this also to me represents your solar and lunar energies coming into balance. There is so much balance to be had right inside of you and just keep breathing, just hang in there because you have the full support of the entire solar system that is helping rejigger and reshuffle these energies so that you can be your perfectly weird, perfectly unique, perfectly authentic you. And literally you're going from the heartbreak of the three of swords to the world, right? Heartbreak of the three of swords, right? That That's heartbreak, this pain, this sorrow, it's gonna go away and you're gonna be left literally sitting on top of the world, guys. Look at this card. That's you ushering in the age of Aquarius, bam, sitting on top of the world. I got nothing else to add to that. What can I say to follow that up? So I'm going to leave you guys there. Sending you so much love and light. Bye. Okay, we are on to Pisces moon. Beautiful, beautiful Pisces moon. I feel my energy just like calming, soothing, <laughs> slowing down, and but expanding. You guys have the most expansive, the deepest, the most intuitive, the most transcendent 
inner landscape of all beings. Also check your chart for any 12th house placements. If you, if, by the way, if anybody happens to have a 12, a Pisces moon in the 12th house, house, holy shit guys, but it doesn't have to be your moon. Um, anything, anything in the 12th house. <laughs> you guys are something else. I, I don't even, and the thing is you guys are kind of nonverbal and, and that doesn't, that doesn't mean that like you guys have trouble speaking or that you're not good communicating with words or anything. Cause a lot of you probably are, a lot of you are probably poets, right? Um, or just really enjoy books and reading, but You're non-linear. Your inner landscape is entirely non-linear. Your inner landscape is inter interdimensional and multidimensional. It is beyond the. Con it is beyond all confines, and it is beyond the earth. Okay, so that one actually did come in in reverse. The first card up is the card of spiritual journey, the Eight of Cups, and it came out in reverse which means that your spiritual journey is like entirely inwards, right? The eight of cups, when it is upright, I read it as walking. Like if it's this way, this is kind of like your 40 days in the wilderness, right? Where you walk out into some kind of situation, which leads you on a spiritual journey. But in this, your spiritual journey is inward because you are so connected to higher realms and you probably don't even, I mean, I mean, yes, I think most of you know that you're very empathic, very intuitive, very psychic, very sensitive, however you like to put it. But what you probably don't understand is the extent of that. I, I'm willing, I would bet money on the fact that none of you really give yourself enough credit for how powerful you are, how special you are in terms of your spiritual gifts, right? Because these are things that you've you know, your experiences that you've had for your whole life, you think are just normal. You're like, oh yeah, everybody feels that and everybody can sense that, right? This is, but it's like, it's not everybody can. <laughs> you guys are special. <laughs> Look at this nine of pentacles. Moving through a portal to enter the golden field. Coming to mind is like the fields of Elysium, which was, I think, the Roman idea of the afterlife of heaven, of paradise, was Elysium, the Elysium fields. And that's what this makes me think of, walking through this portal from this kind of darker, gloomier, more earthly landscape, moving out into this golden space. So for you guys... You need to get comfortable with the fact that much is hidden from you um, and that, that that has nothing to do with your sensitivity. It's it's the way that your inner landscape is non-linear. And as you can see, I'm actually putting these cards face down, which I never, ever, ever do. But that was really natural for me to do right now, tuned into your energy, because you, your, your moon, your lunar energy is completely non-linear. Do not try to linear, linearize your inner landscape. It is not linear at all for you. In order to allow your Piscean moon to come forward, you need to get comfortable with non-linearity. Nothing is linear for you. In terms of your inner landscape, nothing. So this is like... <sighs> if your sun sign is in an air sign, this is going to be really difficult for you because you're used to thinking and planning and plotting and knowing, right? If you're allowing your Piscean moon to come forward, there can't be any more of that because your Piscean moon doesn't think, it doesn't plan. It only intuits. It knows, but it doesn't know by reading it in a book. It doesn't know by learning. It just knows by knowing. This is like gnosis, like with a G, with a G-N, right? Like gnosis. This is your inner knowing on a completely intuitive, empathic, psychic level. And
like your mind is gonna fight this, guys. You, that that's the that's the only thing holding you back is that your you back is that your mind is gonna try to linearize your experience. There could be no more linearizing your experience if you try to learn something, and then you go, hmm, I'm gonna ask these people for advice, or hmm, I'm gonna learn how to do this by reading about it on like in a book, or I'm gonna figure out, I'm gonna like watch videos on YouTube. It's like that's not gonna work for you. It's not gonna work. This needs to be a non-linear experience because you are naturally non-linear. It's just that you forgot that because you've been so caught up in your sun sign energy. You've been caught up in your sun sign energy. So need to get more comfortable with non-linear expression. Okay, beautiful kitty. I need to flip these cards up. I'm going to have to ask you to move. What do I... Okay. So non-linear ways of retrieving information. You could even like do this through dance. This is actually how I have, my, my very initial experiences of non-linear entanglement with my higher, I was gonna say my higher source, which I guess is probably a good way to say it, but I, I meant higher self, but higher source, right? Because this is actually transpersonal. Your Pis Pisces energy is not personal. It has nothing to do with the ego. It has nothing to do with the self. It is transpersonal. So we're going to go with higher source since that's the phrase I just blurted out. Um, if you want to remember something, you want to know something, you want information, like move with it, flow with it, flow with it, embody it. For me, I like to like turn off the lights turn on some really inspiring music and that could be anything. It doesn't have to be obviously spiritual music. It could be any music that seems to fit the vibe. You have to feel everything vibrationally. Uh, sorry guys, I just paused because something startled me and it completely derailed my thoughts. <laughs> um, now I'm a little bit spooked, honestly. I don't know what that was about. Um, and then my cat is back, but we'll just, she'll just, I guess, show her tail here. Um, you have to do everything vibrationally, okay, vibrationally. So pick some music. This is just an example of how you can retrieve information um, in a nonlinear way, like retrieve like insight from your higher source. Turn out the lights because you don't need to be able to see. Turn on some music. Just pick something that seems to fit the vibe that you're seeking and then just move your body. It doesn't even need to be dancing. It can just be <laughs> just whatever, right? anything just do what feels natural to you and let your mind blank out and just let your inner your inner eye let your inner experience let your body have feelings run through your body let your inner vision right and if you don't see with like really in vivid color or you know out loud with your third eye don't worry about it just allow your imagination to run free whatever you're seeing in your imagination that is that is real, okay? That is your intuition. That is what you're supposed to be seeing and receiving. It is real. Just allow that to roam free. And anything that you feel, just make note of it. Anything that you sense, just make note of it. And it's gonna be it's gonna be entirely idiosyncratic, and different for everybody. But that's one way of having a non-linear experience. Because what actually is happening is when you allow yourself to kind of move your body and allow your your inner landscape, your intuition, your imagination. When you allow your imagination to move with the mood, when you allow your imagination to flow with the vibration, that is how your higher source speaks to you, literally through vibration, through vibration that moves you. <laughs> through the vibration that moves you. So, yeah, it's going to take a lot of experimentation and it's going to be very different, right? This is, you're, you're basically, in order to get your lunar self to come forward, you're going to have to learn an entirely new way of downloading information by synchronizing with your higher source in an entirely non-linear way. Okay. So you're actually receiving way, 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 way more like information and downloads and insights from your higher source than you think you are, because you might be, your solar energy might expect that to come through in terms of language, in terms of words, in terms of visuals. And it's not necessarily going to be that way because it's going to be non-linear. It's going to be feelings. It's going to be vibrations. It's going to be movements. It's going to be just insights that's almost impossible to articulate okay that's because that's the depth of piscean energy and dearest beautiful kitty cat i need to get to these cards come on she doesn't want to get up okay come here i'm sorry i love you pretty kitty okay you can sit up here and watch me okay let's see what she was hiding <laughs> okay eight of wands 
I think this is Horus depicted on here. Um, but this is like fast, okay? This is a rapid, rapid initiation. This is, that's the speed with which you can receive information from the beyond, from your higher source. There's nothing you need to do. It, it's like synchronous. You're synchronized with your higher source. And the transmission speed is instant. It's like you don't need to, you guys don't need to download anything, okay? It's like, you know, when you download something on your computer, it takes like time. That's linear. You guys are non-linear. There is no time that is required for a download. When you guys get a download, it's like a synchronous event where suddenly you are just flooded with vibration. And that is what you received. Knight of Wands. Here you are. You've got two selves here. This is like the self and the higher source synchronized across a valley, but the same. These are the same people, right? Just in different places. It's actually like you guys are bilocating, okay? You're, it's like you're bilocating. You were here and you were also the higher source. You were both at once. And that is how you can receive information in a nonlinear fashion because you are literally here and you were there. And so what one is doing, the other one does. Well, one knows, the other knows. It's like a perfectly synchronous, entangled way of receiving information. <sighs> and this beautiful, beautiful devil, okay? I do not read, I typically don't read the devil, and certainly not in this case. This is not negative. This is not about repression. This is not about oppression. This is not about temptation or sin or any of that. This is the earth plane. This is earth energy. This is Capricorn energy, okay? You are bringing in that transcendent light. You're bringing it down into the earth plane, literally with every breath and with every movement of your body, with every vibration that you experience to transform the earth plane. You bring the light down, okay? You are the light bringers. You are the light bearers. You bring the light down into the earth plane. To transform the wisdom of the earth, Okay, you guys bring the light. You are transcendent. You tran when your lunar energy comes forward, it transcends the earth plane. Then you synchronize with the higher light and then you bring it back down into the earth plane experience. And I don't know of any other words that I can use to linearize <laughs> this experience that you guys are having because that that's all I got, guys. It's non-linear. You need to allow yourself to be entirely non-linear. Because the Pisces moon is like the most non-linear thing that I can think of in terms of a, you know, astrological energy. The only, the only way this could get more non-linear if you were like born on a Pisces new moon so that you were sun and, and Pisces new moon. Like the sun and moon in Pisces in the 12th house. That's like the only way this could get even more nonlinear. And I can't even imagine that. Although it's interesting now that I think about it. My best friend in high school, she was a Pisces sun and moon. <laughs> I don't, why am I talking about that? That's completely un irrelevant. But you know what? The, see, I'm rambling. I'm rambling. That's what you guys are like because it, everything is nonlinear. You, you, even when you tell a story, even when you speak, you don't need to link things up in this human linear fashion because... You guys make connections in a non-linear way. You link things thematically, right? You start talking about Pisces and instead of telling your narrative about Pisces, you start linking things up. It's like, okay, now we're just, now I'm remembering all the people I've ever met who were, who were Pisces people, right? It, it's everything is them, thematic like that, like that. And in the world, you're going to have some difficulty because there's going to be some pushback, a little bit of pushback because people are going to try to make you linearize things and your sun energy, right? Your solar energy will also try to make you linearize things. But you just have to keep letting go, letting go and say like, <laughs> I am non-linear, right? I am non-linear. I am interdimensional because that's the path for you guys, the path of non-linearity. So that's all I got for you. I love you guys. Talk to you later. Bye. Okay, this is the 13th reading. This is for people who have their sun and moon in the same sign. So some of you must be born on a new moon, right? <laughs> um, even those of you who aren't like weren't exactly born on a new moon, maybe, you know, your sun and moon are at opposite ends of the sign. Um, 
you're still kind of holding that new moon energy because your sun and moon are balanced. They are the same. They are the same. So everybody else is working on getting acquainted with their lunar energy and bringing it forward. But you guys are already, you guys don't need to do that <laughs> because your lunar energy is already there. It's already the same as your solar energy. So I, I actually not, I've been pondering on this for two days now and I don't know what the message for you guys is going to be. That's why I want to do something specific just for you. I mean, there might still be messages for you in your actual moon sign reading, but, but I'm not sure. And you're the only group I'm using Oracle cards for. So I'm just going to, draw some stuff here and see what the message is because I'm a little bit perplexed. I don't know what it is like to have sun and moon in the same sign except it gives it this vibe of just uh, balance is the only word but, but like but we use the word balance so often I feel like the word is so incredibly overused but you guys are kind of like the embodiment of equality, the embodiment of balance. I think it takes lifetimes of a very specific type of soul work in order to get your sun and moon in the same sign. Eight of cups in reverse. What? This is, the, this is exactly what came out for the Pisces moon. <laughs> so weird. It also came out in reverse. Very strange. Okay, I'm gonna pull a couple more. I had the whole deck upside down, so I think I'll actually flip that upright. I don't typically read reversals. Five of Wands. Page of Pentacles. I don't get it. What is this about? Okay, so there's a conflict. There's a conflict. Five of Wands is literally the energy of conflict. It doesn't need to be a serious conflict, but it is like a stress, an irritation. And there's a conflict between your spirituality and your grounded life. So everybody else is having this experience of balancing this energy inside of themselves, right? Reconciling their solar energy with their lunar energy for you guys. Since you're kind of already integrated, you're already an integrated whole. For you, this is manifesting as... Like balancing yourself with your environment. Eight of Cups, the spiritual journey, Page of Pentacles, the embodiment of a new life. And there's a conflict between those two things. <laughs> Honeybee, responsibility. This card comes out when people are being invited and being called to step up and get connected with their collective, just like a hive of bees, right? Have you guys been holding yourself apart from your collective? I, I actually, I want another one of these. Have you been holding yourself apart from the collective? Or has the collective been holding itself from you? Have you felt excluded from the collective? That could go either way. What's... What's the issue between you and the collective? You and your collective. Intuition. Intuition again with the Eight of Cups. That's black cat. Black cat. <laughs> your intuition can serve the collective. You are here to be of service to the collective. But something has been blocking you. passion. Release your deepest desires. You are here to follow a path. You are here to walk a very specific path. You are here to manifest a specific purpose. Are you walking your passion? Your passion is your purpose. Your passion is your purpose. If you do not feel like your life 
is full of passionate purpose in every moment of every day, then you're not on your path. Passion again. Wow. Burn the critic. Burn the critic. Okay. You guys have been held back in life. Feeling like you don't fit in, feeling like you can't fit in. I don't know. Is there something about having your your sun and moon in the same sign? Does that is there something about that that makes you feel different? It's funny because I'm re this I'm reading this for, you know, you could be all 12 zodiac signs are represented here, right? All of the energies are represented here, but there apparently there's a common thing for all of you. Does it does it make you feel weird? Does it make you feel different? Does it make you feel like there's almost something missing? Do you feel like you have that's so strange. Why would you feel like there's something missing from yourself? What do you feel is missing? What are, is there something you're passionate about that is not in your life right now? To find the thing that you're passionate about, you have to follow your passion. Whatever, the, to me, this is the sense of something missing and I, I didn't expect that and I don't really understand it, honestly, but that's just the message here. There's something that's missing that you feel. You feel like there's something missing, but, and your purpose your, is to go on your road of passion to find it. So this is follow your passion, follow your passion, literally whatever your passion is, like this, every single passion is represented here, literally whatever your passion is to go out and get it. Um, it's like, first you need to follow the passion and then you find what the thing that you're passionate about It's you're looking for something. You're all looking for something different, but you're looking for something. And you might feel like you can't do anything until the thing you're looking, until you find it. You're trying to find it first, but that's a little bit backwards. The message here is to follow your passion first, even if you feel like you don't have enough, even if you feel like you're not good enough, even if you feel like you can't do it, do it first. The point, your whole journey, your whole, whole journey is follow your intuition. Follow your intuition, follow your passion, burn the critic, okay? Every time you tell yourself that you can't do something, every time you tell yourself that you're not good enough, every time you tell yourself that you can't, nah, burn that, burn it, burn it. All those critical thoughts in your head, burn the critic. This is burn your inner critic. It is stifling your passion, okay? The inner critic is stifling your passion. You need to burn the critic so that you can release your deepest desires. What is it that you want? What lights you up? What is your passion? You need to follow it because that is part of your soul's purpose. That is part of your spiritual journey and that is part of what will align you with your new life, with your new reality, with your new earth. You need to follow your passion. And then that is how you come into this place of per perfect reciprocity. Perfect reciprocity because you guys are actually designed to live in harmonious balance with your sun and moon in the same sign because you have a, you have this level of inner balance between your solar and lunar energy because they are the same, right? There is this inner harmony. And maybe that's the problem because you, you, want, you expect to find that harmony outside in the world and it's not there. You look out into the world and you only see conflict. You expect to look out into the world and see harmony and it's not there. Follow your passion, follow your intuition, then you will find harmony and then you will find this place of reciprocity. This honeybee card is really profound and really cool because when this energy is fully experienced, you find that everywhere you go, it's just so symbiotic, so reciprocal, right? Giving and receiving in perfect balance everywhere you go. It is like, imagine if humans could live like honeybees, right? Building this beautiful hive, building this beautiful, loving world together where everyone is taken care of, everyone is looked after, and everyone has an important role, everyone serves an important purpose, all part of one big human family, right? You guys apparently <laughs> really see the potential of like the of the future of earth. You see that we could be, be, humans could be like honeybees, right? We could live in this place of perfect recipro reciprocity. And you guys are destined to experience that in this life, but the only trick is you have to follow your passion first. Follow your passion, even if there are obstacles, that is your path. That is your path. Follow your intuition, follow your passion. You are designed for this. 
you're almost like an arrow. So, cause you guys are a little bit more focused cause everybody else is having this solar and lunar energy being two different things coming together, but you are already one cohesive thing. And it gives you this ability to kind of push to kind of push like it, like an arrowhead, N not, not like violently, like an arrow shooting into something, but just like a, a wedge, <laughs> you're like a wedge. It gives you this ability to push through stuff because you have that inner balance and it makes you more able to move through resistance but you might not like that feeling. You might not like that feeling of moving through resistance, but just tune into your inner, your inner stability, your inner balance, your inner wisdom. Set yourself on the path of your passion and follow your intuition to get to this land of milk and honey, right? To the, to the beehive, to where you live in perfect reciprocity with all of those in your community. So I'm going to leave you guys there. <sighs> Sending you all of you so much love and light. Bye.